Ready. Goes left and there he goes. Ten, five, touchdown, Pirates. Pirates win. You can see these pinches purple. ECU Athletics and ECU Physicians present a classic rewind of ECU football. We hope you enjoy this trip back to September 8th, 2007 for the Pirates versus the Tar Heels. Today's broadcast is brought to you by ECU Physicians. Your wellness is our specialty. And now with the head coach of the Pirates, Mike Houston, here's Brian Bailey. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. It's our first East Carolina Classic Rewind. I'm Brian Bailey with head coach Mike Houston. We're going to take you back to 2007 for the East Carolina UNC game this afternoon. But first, we've got some time to visit with the coach. And coach, I know this has been a very difficult time for all of us, but especially for your football program here. Well, I mean, it's a difficult time for everybody. Um, you know, we're all uh, in the same situations and learning how to adjust daily. Uh, you know, to this new life and, uh, you know, trying to do our moral responsibility with distancing and trying to slow the spread of the virus, but at the same time trying to uh, support each other, help each other. Uh, and as a program, we're trying to function at a high level daily uh, in our new virtual world. You know, I've, I've never ran a WebEx uh, teleconference before, but now that's, you know, that's our daily life. Uh, and, you know, finding different ways to interact with recruits, finding different ways to interact with our players in the program. Um, I think all of us uh, are, you know, I think finding a greater appreciation for each other uh, as we move through this. So, uh, you know, it's, we're no different than anybody else and uh, just trying to find a way to be productive. What can the players do right now as far as workouts go and, and, and trying to get ready for the upcoming season? Well, the, the big thing right now is they're, we're really focusing on their academics. Um, you know, they're doing virtual learning, distance learning. Uh, with their professors and so really trying to make sure that they're on top of that stuff, that they're really engaged with their professors uh, and that they're doing the best job that they can given the situation they're in. Um, you know, with our football program, our, our strength and conditioning staff, Coach Big John and his staff, you know, they're interacting daily with the players. Uh, each player has an individualized workout uh, that, you know, really fits the situation they're in. For some of them, it's a body weight workout and some conditioning outside. Uh, for others, they do have access to a home gym or some type of gym uh, that's, uh, you know, for their personal use. So depending on their situation, uh, Coach Williams has an individualized uh, plan for them. And then the strength staff is communicating with each player daily, you know, about the workout that they just did. Um, you know, with our, with our, with our assistant coaches, um, you know, we're being pretty productive. I mean, we're, we're, we're really uh, moving at a, a pretty high level in recruiting. Um, you know, with our interaction with recruits, everything has to be done digitally right now. You can't have anybody on campus or anything like that. We can't go out, so, but we are being very productive with that. Uh, you know, a lot of offers going out, you know, really establishing some strong relationships. The thing that you hate about missing the spring was we have a new defensive staff, new defensive scheme going in. Um, we have so many new players on that side of the football and so many young players on that side of the football. Uh, that spring practice was going to be a time to really, you know, really learn a lot about ourselves and really evolve our scheme. You know, we, we had that taken away from us. Um, I'm hoping that the NCAA is going to make some, uh, some much needed adjustments. I think they're going to, I think you're probably going to see them use a lot of common sense and maybe allow us to do some things in the summer uh, when we are through all this uh, that uh, will give us a chance to make up for some of that going into fall camp. All right, coach, let's take a look at some football. Let's take you back to 2007, September the 8th, East Carolina and North Carolina right here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, our East Carolina Classic Rewind. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, Bagwell Field in Greenville for East Carolina Pirate football. The Pirates and the Tar Heels for only the second time in Greenville in this series. East Carolina comes in at 0-1 and North Carolina comes in at 1-0. and Marty Fuhr is Matt Ingram. Continue to run Davis on the sidelines with our Pirates and Wireless sideline mic tonight in Greenville. Ben Hartman will put it on the team for the Pirates. And North Carolina will send the return men back, Brandon Tate and also Greg Little. The Pirates come out here tonight in the all purple uniforms, the purple jerseys, the purple pants. They have the purple headgear, the white numerals, and the purple and gold headgear. And North Carolina in that very familiar 
baby blue pants. They've got the blue numbers. They've got the white jersey and then also the blue and white headgear. Kevin, the stage is set. We've seen a lot of games like this for the Pirates where sometimes East Carolina will win a big game like this. Sometimes they won't. I think this is a defining game for this team, not only perhaps this year, but maybe in the skip holes here right here at ECU. This is a big game tonight for the Pirates. Jeff, this game is huge. And you heard Quentin Cotton say in the pregame, it's just another game. Well, I think I was a little tongue-in-cheek. I think he knows that he wants to win this one bad. It's not just another game. They realize that North Carolina is a team that they've been wanting to play for a while, and they want to beat. So I'm sure they're hyped up for this game. And I think you can tell it's a big game because the Pirates have broken out the all-purple uniforms here tonight. Purple pants, purple jerseys. The all-purple tonight for East Carolina. They break those purple jerseys out and purple pants the entire set for big games. And this one is a big game here tonight. East Carolina. Losing last week at Virginia Tech, 17 to 7. Meanwhile, North Carolina was victorious over James Madison in Chapel Hill last week, 37 to 14. So the stage is set, and what a beautiful night for football in Greenville. Bright blue eastern North Carolina skies. Game time temperature is 85 degrees, and just a beautiful sight of purple and gold here tonight with some blue scattered in throughout the stands. Both bands, of course, are here. North Carolina brought their entire band, so just a great side for college football. Ben Hartman has it on the tee. It punches the football, and we're underway. An end-over-end kick, and it is going five yards deep and hesitating, and then going to a knee is Tate. And North Carolina will down the ball in the end zone and bring it out to the 20-yard line. North Carolina returned and a little bit confused as to whether or not he wanted to come out. And he was five yards deep when he fielded that kickoff. It came out about four yards and then knelt down about a yard behind the goal line. And North Carolina will send their offense on the field first to begin this ball game tonight in Greenville. The quarterback is T.J. Yates, 13 out of 18 last week in the ball game with James Madison. His left tackle is Kyle Jolly. The left guard, Aaron Stahl over the ball at center is Scott Lennonham. The right guard is Calvin Darity. The right tackle is Darren Reynolds. We'll see a lot of different offensive sets and formations in this pro-style attack for North Carolina tonight. Elsie's in motion to the right side. Here is Yates keeping the ball. He dumps it off, and a man's wide open. Elsie out of the backfield. 30, 35, 40. He's down the sideline. 50 to the 40. He's to the 30-yard line and tripped up at the 25-yard line. Elsie went in motion to this near side, then reverse field, and it was a little dump pass over the line of scrimmage. And he was wide open, and the race was on down the far sideline. Finally, Travis Williams knocked him out of bounds. And a big game to the Pirate 27-yard line, a down Tar Heel. Man, Upfield is right guard, Calvin Darity. And he is down on his stomach at about the 18-yard line. And Kevin, just as I mentioned, the different formations and the different motion this North Carolina offense can give you. They hit the Pirates with a play they weren't expecting. Well, Jeff, just a great play call by offense coordinator John Shoup right there because in the beginning of the game, players are really excited. They're really hyped up, and they're known to be too aggressive, and they'll overplay. And so he get the, the rollout bootleg there, drop it off to Bobby Rome, and what a great play to get these guys started. And that's not what the Pirates needed here early on. 53 yards on that pickup, and... Marty, you were probably following the ball as we were. Did you see what happened to the big right guard at Carolina guarding? No, I did not. It looks Ladies like a lower leg injury. Maybe Calvin him on the back Garrity. side. But, you know, he was blocked on the side that everyone bit on, on the fake. And as you described it, Kevin, the Pirates were so aggressive looking for the ball the first time through, everybody went for that fake. Not the way you want to start the game on defense for the Pirates. They give up a big 53-yard pass play from Yates to Bobby Rome, the sophomore out of Norfolk. And he's really pretty much their short yardage guy to give the ball to in short yardage situations, a big fullback. But yeah, he shows pretty good speed. That's up for a guy 255 times. But there was nobody around. So he was just able to cruise down the sideline. Great play call by, by the Tar Heels. First down and 10. Tar Heels have the ball at the Pirate 27-yard line. Tight end Richard Quinn switches from the right side to the left side of the formation. There's Rome in motion, going to the left side. And there's the handoff. It goes to the left side. The ball goes through. Johnny Wink. Number 34, Johnny Wink. Out of Asheville. He was a great player at Asheville High Travis School. Travis Williams on the stop for the Pirates. Choo-choo Justice, one of the all-time great Tar Heels, Fred Wilson and Travis Williams. He and a five on the play. The Pirates. Spot the ball down second at the 22-yard line. It'll bring up second down and five. 
Jeff, uh, right guard Calvin Darity missed all of 2005 with a broken foot. He couldn't put any weight on that foot going off. I don't know if it was the same one, but that, I'm sure the Tar Heels hope not. He comes from good stock. His grandfather played for the 49ers. Second down and five. Ball is at the 22-yard line. Man in motion to the left side. Nate short drop throws, and it's dropped at the 15-yard line. Big time hit. There were three Pirates there to win a clobber. And by Pierre Bell, he was also in the area. And it brings up third down and five. Kevin will have to really be aware if there are the Pirates on defense tonight. A couple of big one receivers for two picks. He's 6'1", 215, Brandon Tate. 6'1", 200, big guys who can run. Those guys can run. Third play from scrimmage last week, a 65-yarder for a touchdown. So they're used to coming out and getting started quick. Two receivers out wide to the right side. Long back set. Sets up from right to left. Gates is back, short drop, pumping, looking. He's going to go in the end zone. Ball is out there. It's tipped in. It's a play by the Good coverage by Jerry Hewitt. Gates did a good job of putting some air under that ball for a key mix. And Nix had a chance, Kevin, to run Jerry under that Hewitt ball. I thought when he threw it, it was going to be overthrown, but again, he had to run air under that ball. Great throw there by Yates. Derek Hewitt did a great job of keeping his composure. A young corner sometimes will get really excited, jump too early or not jump on time, and not be able to make that play. He did a good job Connor hanging in there and made a great play. Connor Barth has made 12 field goals in a row. He comes in to attempt this field goal. It will be a 39-yard attempt for Connor Barth, the senior out of Wilmington. There's the snap. Ball is down. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Connor Barth hits from 39 yards out, and the Tar Heels are on the board first, thanks to that big pass play of 53 yards from Gangster Road, and with 13.54 to go in the first quarter. It's North Carolina 3, East Carolina nothing. We're back with more first quarter play-by-play -play action after this timeout on the Pirate ISP Sports Network. Well, this big crowd, a little air out of the sails with the field goal by Connor Barth, and he's now hit 13 in a row for North Carolina. The North Carolina drive, five plays, 58 yards, 39-yarder by Connor Barth in the big play, that 53-yard pass play from the quarterback T.J. Yates to his running back Bobby Rome. It's got the Tar Heels up by three, three nothing, and the Pirates will come out offensively for the first time and attempt to return this kickoff. Going back deep for the Pirates is Chris Johnson along with the true freshman, Jonathan Williams from right here at Rose High School in Greenville. Connor Barth will kick it off to the Tar Heels from left to right across the Pirate ISP Sports Radio Network dial. So good to have you aboard tonight from Greenville. Jeff Charles, Kevin Monroe, Marty Fewer, and David Horn. All the play-by-play -play action of Pirate football every Saturday right here on the Pirate ISP Sports Network. It's a kaleidoscope of purple and gold here tonight in Greenville. This will rank as one of the bigger crowds in the history of Pirate football and most likely will rank in the top five. It will rank somewhere around 43,000 plus. We'll see what the official attendance will be, probably before halftime. But there's not a seat in the house. Connor Barnes will put it on the tee at the 30-yard line. Johnson back deep at his own two. Williams is up at his own 13-yard line. Connor Barth with the kick, and he's kicking it right to Chris Johnson. Could be a mistake. He catches it on the run to 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25-yard line, and he drives forward, and Chris is knocked down at the 28-yard line. So the Pirates will come out first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Patrick Pinckney at the controls, the junior out of Fayetteville and Pine Forest High School. Up front for the Pirates, it'll be Josh Kaufman at left tackle. The left guard's Matt Butler. The center is Fred Hicks. The right guard is Doug Palmer, and the right tackle, DJ Scott. Devon Drew, the junior out of Newburn, is the tight end. Pirates will line up with a couple of wideouts and Jamar Bryant and also Steven Rogers. Chris Johnson and Dominique Lindsay will be the running backs for the Pirates as we start this first play from the 28-yard line, first down and 10. Patrick Pinckney, very impressive at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg last week. Gets the snap, handoff, it goes to Johnson. Chris lowers the head gear and gets about two yards to the 30-yard line over the right side. It'll bring up second down and eight. Wesley Flagg out of Fayetteville, Jackwood High School, stepped up and made the tackle for North Carolina. North Carolina will line up defensively with Hiley Taylor and E.J. Wilson at the defensive ends. The tackles are Tavares Brown and Kentwan Balmer. Linebackers Darrell Mapp, Wesley Flagg, and also Bruce Carter. And in the secondary, it's Williams, Goddard, Deontay Williams, and Kendrick Burney. 
Second down and eight coming up at the 30-yard line. Here's Pinckney rolling left, looking downfield. Pinckney's going to throw it, and it's incomplete. We've got a flag down, maybe a hold against the Pirates, and it may be coming back. Pinckney's pass sailed over the head of the Pirate bench here on this near sideline. Tended receiver was Steven Rogers, and we've got a flag down, and Kevin, we saw way too many flags against the Pirates last week. Yeah, most of them came in the second half, which is surprising. We got an early hold here, and we'll see how the Pirates bounce back from that. Holding. Number 70 on ECU. 10-yard penalty. Second half. Doug Palmer, young player out of Fayetteville, a sophomore, the right guard, guilty of the holding call. DJ Scott, the right tackle, had three penalty flags thrown against him last week. And in that third quarter last week of Blacksburg, the Pirates had seven penalties. Skip Holtz was ready to tear his hair out. He said, we just stayed so far behind the chains in that entire third quarter. And boy, these holding calls really hurt you. It's now second down and 18 yards to go. Well, that makes it tough. Ball is at the 20-yard line. Three receivers to the left side. Here's Pinckney trying to run to the right side. He got about two yards. And that's it. It's going to bring up third down and 16. Patrick Pinckney went behind Doug Palmer in that right side of the Pirate offensive line. Kenwan Palmer. Stepped up and made the tackle. DJ He's out of Weldon, North Carolina. And you got to be careful here, Kevin, on third down and 16, deep in your own territory. Usually uh, coaches don't come out with anything too cute with third and 16. You, you see lots of screens and draws and misdirection. Wide right goes Jamar Bryant. Three receivers out wide to the left side, including Steven Rogers. Tar Heels lead, three to nothing, just underway in the first quarter. Here's Pinckney out of the shotgun. Pinckney looks over the middle, throws the ball, and it's complete. Breaking into the secondary to the 40-yard line, to the 30-yard line, to the 20-yard line. It's Chris Johnson, 15, 10, 5. He's in. Touchdown, Pirates. That was a little dump off over the line of scrimmage, Kevin Monroe, and it goes the distance for the touchdown to Chris Johnson, and the Pirates have a 6 3 I'm actually surprised, Jeff, that the that Carolina didn't see that coming. Third and long, you always get screens and draws. That was a screen right there, Chris Johnson. Such good breakaway speed. Once he got by, you're not going to catch him. 78 yards on the touchdown pass, and that ball didn't go more than five or six yards in the air. He just dumped it over the line of scrimmage, and then it was Chris off to the races. Here's the extra point by Hartman. It is up, and it's good. And the Pirates with a big play on the Carolina defense. 12-16 to go, first quarter. East Carolina 7, North Carolina 3. Coming back, the sold-out Downey Pickman Stadium Bagwell Field after this network timeout. This huge throng in Greenville tonight. On their feet as the Pirates have a 7-3 lead over North Carolina. Some early fireworks in this one. We have only played two minutes and 44 seconds. Hartman gets ready to kick it off. Tate and Little back deep for North Carolina. This one is coming three yards deep. And the Carolina return man's going to bring it out. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And he's knocked down from behind Brandon Tate at the 48-yard line. A 48-yard return. Jonathan Williams, a true freshman from Greenville Rose, caught him from behind. And there's the speed of Brandon Tate, and he's taken three kickoffs back for touchdowns in his Carolina career, and he just about, Kevin, broke that one. Well, we're starting to see the difference in this year's kickoff rule, kicking off from the 30 instead of the 35, and Tate had plenty of room to run, and boy, he got a, a full head of steam. He's a big guy, but he can really run. He's 200 pounds and 6'1". Pirates were lucky they corralled him right about midfield. It's at the 49-yard line. And off will go to the first man through. He's hit and dropped. Purple jerseys everywhere on the ball carrier. Johnny White out of Asheville looked up and he saw three purple jerseys. Dan Estridge was there. Pierre Bell was also there. And they meet him head on in Kevin of the Pirates and play against the run tonight like they did against the Hokies. They've got a good chance to win this game tonight. Surprised everybody last week holding Brandon Orr just to 70 yards. Virginia Tech total rushing offense, 33 yards. That was just amazing. Put the ball right back in the line of scrimmage. Actually, they say he lost about a half yard, so we'll call it second down and 11. Bobby Rome in motion to the right side. Yates back in the pocket, looking, throwing over the middle. He drilled it in there, and it's caught at the 43-yard line. The receiver goes down. He's about three yards short of the first down. Akeem Nix with the catch, and Jerry Hewitt with the tackle. And I can see, Kevin, why the East Carolina coaches have been so impressed 
with Yates. Boy, he throws a nice ball. He does throw a nice ball. It was crisp, but it was right to the wide receiver in the exact spot he wanted. They're quickly back to the line of scrimmage on third down and two. And uh, first man through, driving forward. Looks like he's got the first down at the 40-yard line. Tar Heels came out quickly. A quick count on third down, and they get enough for the first down. I'll tell you one thing, Marty Fuhrer on the sideline with our Verizon wireless mic. This game's got a great tempo to it here in the early going. It really does, Jeff. Very fast. How about all the big plays already? Big plays on both sides. Fans are going to get their money's worth in this one tonight in Greenville. First down and 10. Tar Heels with the ball at the 40-yard line. Wide to the left side goes Brandon Tate. Two backs set behind Yates, and now the tight end switches from the right to the left side, and Richard Quinn. And in motion is Tate, and here is Yates in the pocket, looking, throwing. Got a man out there, and he turned the other way. A little mix-up on that pass pattern that time as Brandon Tate turned in toward the post, and that ball sailed to the sideline incomplete. Leon Best defended on the play for the Pirates, and it brings up second down and 10. This is Leon's first series. This. Uh, this game, actually Travis Williams started off the game at the corner spot. Leon didn't have the best game last week. Let's hope he can calm down, play a little bit better today. Leon's a walk on out of Kinston at four tackles against the Hokies. Second down and 10 now coming up for North Carolina at the Pirate 40-yard line. East Carolina leads 7-3. to three. Receiver out wide right and another receiver out wide to the left. They'll keep it on the ground this time and the ball here for the Tar Heels is hit and dropped in about the 38-yard line. Got about two yards, and then help came in a hurry on Johnny White. Fred Wilson was there. Pierre Bell was there. And it brings up third down and seven. The bell tolls here at Downey Pickman Stadium Bagwell Field. And some wholesale changes on defense. Four new Pirates run on out there, led by Jeremy Chambliss. Dick Johnson also ran out. Brings up third down, seven yards to go for the Tar Heels at the Pirate, 37-yard line. Yates, play action, in the pocket, looks, throws, got to throw it deep, got a man out there, catches the ball, touchdown, Akeem Nix in the corner of the end zone. Just like that, a 37-yard strike from T.J. Yates to Akeem Nix. He's the freshman All-America, the sophomore out of Charlotte. He got behind Van Eskridge. Big play by the Tar Heels. And North Carolina goes back on top, 9-7. To Another well-thrown ball by T.J. Yates. You had Leon Best underneath, Van Eskridge on top, and neither one could get there to make the play. Great throw and catch. Connor Barth is in now for the extra point. He missed one against James Madison last week. And he's 4 out of 5 on the year. There's a snap, ball down, kick is up, and the kick is good. Six plays, 51 yards. Big pass play from Yates to Nix of 37 yards. And the Tar Heels are back on top, 10 to 7. So, Kevin, unless this thing really settles down, we could really have a shootout on our hands tonight. The tempo of this game is crazy right now. Both teams running up and down the field. Got to do a better job at kickoff coverage and, and just kind of Shutting that thing down around the 20-yard line. That's really what got it started. The long return by Tate. Connor Barth will kick it off from left to right across your Pirate ISP Sports Radio Network dial. Chris Johnson back at the 5. Jonathan Williams standing at the 12 for the Pirates. Last time they kicked the ball right to Chris. Here's the kick. And this one more in the middle of the field. And Williams will pick it up at the 15 to the 20 to the 25 to the 30. And the freshman with his first touch gets the ball out to the 32-yard line. Pirates will have it first down and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Marty, if you're a lot of fireworks early in this one. A lot of fireworks and some concern on the Pirate defensive side right now. Team coming off, looking for answers. Coaching staff just spoke to everyone upstairs in the booth, taking a look at exactly where the breakdowns are right now, looking to make those early adjustments. But, Kevin, they look a little stunned right now. Receivers left and right. Jason Holder, the tight end, shifts from the left to the right side of the formation. Pinckney turns, hands it off, and Dominic Lindsay gets the carry. 
And Dominic struggles Dominic to get back to the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up second down and 10. Darrell Mapp stepped up, made the tackle Darrell for North, North Carolina. I'll tell you one thing, Kevin. The Pirates are going to have to get a big time pass game rush one. on TJ Yates because to me, second he looks like nine. the kind of guy that can stand back there and pick you apart. He, he is, and they're not really just dropping back and passing it. They're rolling him out, which is making it tough on the Pirates to get a handle on him. So hopefully they can figure it out and get that rush going. TJ Lee out wide to the right side. He made a catch last week in the ball game at Virginia Tech. Jawan Crowell in motion to the right side. Now sets up in the slot on second down and 10. Pinkney back, looking, throwing, and it's incomplete. And there's a late flag coming down. Got a pass interference. Jay Sunhall with the tight end. The intended receiver and reaching over the top, Kendrick Burney. And he's going to be flagged for a pass interference call in the Carolina secondary. Pirates are taking a different approach today, Jeff, than they did last week. You're not seeing Pinkney in the shotgun a whole lot, running that option approach. He's under center a lot starting off here early in the game, so it's a different look from the Pirates. Officials huddle up and talk it over at the 35-yard line. The face mask call by Kendrick Burney. The penalize North Carolina, and the Pirates will be... The recipient of the yardage going to move the chains across the way and mark the line of scrimmage at the 47 yard line. At East Carolina 47 so, yard line. Pirates at the 47 the for the first down. First down and 10 to 47. Jamar Bryant, he's the guy they want to be the big play guy this year. He splits out wide to the right side. First down and 10. East Carolina with the ball at its own 47 yard line. Man in motion, high snap. Pinkney has to jump to get it. Starts off to the right side to the 50 to the 45 yard line. And Patrick picks up eight yards. And a virtual what could have been a disaster. He was hit and dropped by Kendrick Williams out of Charlotte. He's a walk on. And Deontay Williams, young man from White Oak High School in Jacksonville. Eight yard pickup brings up second down and two. And a high snap that time from Fred Hicks back to the quarterback, Kevin, Patrick Pinckney. That was a familiar sight last year. James Pinckney was jumping for snaps all the time. Fred Hicks is a new center for the Pirates. Hopefully we won't see too much of that this year. Fred, a converted defensive lineman playing center. Second down and two now coming up. Patrick Pinckney's got the ball at the North Carolina 45-yard line. Tar Heels lead 10-7. They'll keep it on the ground. And a big time stick made by Hiley Taylor. Hiley Taylor. He stood up, the Pirate running back, and bear hugged him, and then put him to the turf as Dominic Lindsay looked up and saw big Hiley Taylor. Hiley Taylor out of Laurenburg, the coaches all week told me about how what a good athlete he is. 6'3", 245, and a senior. 14th straight start tonight. He made a big-time hit, Kevin. Yeah, very experienced. As you said, started every game last year. He knows what to do in big games like this. The crowd is not going to bother him. He's going to come out and make plays. Third down and three now for the Pirates. 7.22 to go in the first quarter, and the Pirates are going to call a timeout. Timeout, East Carolina. Our score, North Carolina 10, East Carolina 7. Back in Greenville after this network timeout. Third down and three. Patrick Pinkney fakes the handoff, rolls to the right side. He's got the first down at the 41-yard line of North Carolina. Good ball picking by Patrick Pinckney. Wesley Flagg, the middle linebacker, stepped up and made the tackle. And Kevin, you talked about it in our East Carolina back in the pregame show. Patrick Pinckney, very good with the ball, very good with his fakes and following through. Jeff, this is the type of offense that's suited for him. I, coach, I hope Coach Holt sees that and sticks with it because he's better in the shotgun than he is under the center. First down and 10. Pirates with the ball at the Carolina. 41-yard line. Tar Heels lead 10 to 7. Out of the shotgun. There's the handoff to Dominique Lindsay across the 40 to the 39-yard line. And Dominic the, Lindsay on the, carry for the Pirates. junior out of Charlotte Independence is pushed back after about a two-yard pickup. Darrell Mapp made the tackle for Bruce Carolina. Carolina. Bruce Carolina. Carter was also right behind. Bruce Carter's out of Havelock. He's stepping up today and Second playing for the seven. injured Chase Rice. The starter is out for the year. And Bruce Carter, an outstanding athlete, played in Eastern North Carolina at Havelock High School, gets the start here tonight in place of the injured Chase Rice. He makes the tackle, second down and seven. Two receivers out wide right, two to the left. Ball is at the 38-yard line, out of the shotgun. Pinckney faking, faking, pumping, pump one too many times. Three Tar Heels gang up on him and sack him back at the 47-yard line. And there's Hiley Taylor again. 
Ketwan Bomber was also Hiley there. Taylor, Mark Haskell was right behind, but Hiley Tyler was there. He was the first guy wreaking havoc, and he's a tough guy to block. He's not real big. The Pirates have some bigger defensive play. ends. He's 245 pounds, but he's a great athlete, has a great motor. And you really have to get a hat on him. It's third down and 16 now to go for the Pirates. Ball is at the Carolina 47-yard line. Two receivers left and two right out of the shotgun on third down and 16. Carolina will only rush three. Pinckney looks in the pocket, steps up, throws, caught at the 40-yard line, and bang, Steven Rogers gets his clock clean and pops right back up. Darrell Mapp absolutely laid Steven Rogers out, but the little guy pops right back up. But the Pirates are way short of the first down on that pass play. They're about seven yards short. And so East Carolina will have to punt the ball away. And here comes Matt, Matt Dodge. Dodge on a fourth down and seven, Matt Dodge is in to punt it. And as the punt team comes out, we have a timeout goal. Timeout, 5-10 to go, first quarter. Carolina 10, Pirates 7. We're back after this. Local timeout on the Pirate ISP Sports Network. Matt Dodge comes in to punt the ball for the Pirates, and he tried to get his punt inside the five-yard line. He almost popped that thing straight up in the air. Disaster because the ball hit, and then it rolled back upfield. And Matt Down Dodge has a punt of 12 yards. The ball was at the 38. It was down at the 26. A 12-yard punt for Matt Dodge. He came in averaging 44 yards per boot after nine punts at Virginia Tech. And the Pirates trying to nail him deep. And it didn't work, Kevin. The Tar Heels now come out with decent field position to start this drive. Jeff, this quarter needs to end. Defense is not playing great. Offense is not in sync. Special teams giving up long yardage and not getting off a good punt. Not going so well right now. 4.58 to go first quarter. Carolina leads. East Carolina 10 to 7. Ball is at the 26-yard line. And here's Yates again in the pocket. Boy, he likes to throw it. He throws it out. And the ball is caught out of the backfield. Down the sideline is Johnny White. And it's complete. And Richie Rich actually made that catch on the far sideline. Not the cartoon character, I hope. Van Eskridge stepped up and made the tackle. Kevin, you remember Richie Rich? I do remember yeah, Richie Rich. <laughs> I don't think he's playing out there tonight. I think this guy from Marietta, Georgia, is the guy to alternate him. And Johnny White, ball is at the 35-yard line. Second down and one after the nine yard pickup. I can't believe the air Yates puts under these passes. That ball looked like it was totally overthrown and Rich just ran under it. In motion is Rome. Hand off left side. This time it's Johnny White. Johnny White gets about two yards, should have enough for the first down. Marcus Hands was there, Travis Williams and Fred Wilson were all there. And it's a first down for Carolina, first and 10. North Carolina, Marty Fuhr on the sideline with our Verizon Wireless mic. I'll tell you what, Carolina throws a lot at you offensively, don't they? They really do, and Jeff, you can see it from the sideline. They're putting a lot of pressure on the outside for the Pirates, one way to neutralize that push up front. Scott Lenahan over the ball at center for North Carolina. His dad played football for the Indiana Hoosiers. Gates throws, man is wide open, and he can't catch the ball. Ball was... Overthrown by just a bit. Akeem Nix was the intended receiver. TJ that ball was not on target. The receiver was wide Nicks open. Chris Maddox, Adam Newbern, defending on the play Chris for the Pirates. And it brings up second down and 10 yards second to go. A lot of cushion given that time by Jarek Hewitt. There was no one else in his zone other than Nix. He's got to be careful not to get out of there too quickly. Lenahan over the ball at center. Second down and 10 coming up. North Carolina 10. East Carolina 7. 424 to go first quarter. And a motion is Akeem Nix. Here's Yates going to throw it again. Fires to the right side. Stip. Ball is almost picked off by Fred Wilson. He could not get it. He glanced off the hands of Quentin Cotton. Incomplete. Brings up third down and 10 yards to go. Third down and 10. I'll tell you what, Kevin, they're not bashful. TJ Yates has come off the bus here firing away. Well, Jeff, they watched the film. They saw what the Pirates did defensively against the rush. They saw what happened against the pass. They came out here wanting to pass the football. That's what they're doing. Third down and 10 now coming up. Receivers left and right. Yates has already thrown 10 passes. He's 4 of 10, 108 yards. Pirates look for the stop on third down and 10. 
37-yard line. Yates stepping up, looking, dumps it off incomplete. He one-hops the receiver at the 50-yard line. The Pirates get a stop. It'll bring up fourth down and 10 in North Carolina. We'll have to punt the ball away. Fourth down and 10. Nice defensive stand that time by the Pirates. We actually made Yates get some happy feet that time and made a bad throw. Steven Rogers, who got his bell rung pretty good, but popped right back up, goes back to field this punt for the Pirates. In the punt away is Terrence Brown. Terrence Brown is in his first year with the Tar Heels, a junior college transfer from Fresno City College in California. Had four punts and a 50.2 average last week against James Madison. There's the punt, and it's a sailor. Rogers calls for the fair catch and takes it at the 14-yard line. So a 49-yard punt by Terrence Brown. That's just about his average. He's a heck of an athlete. He was drafted by the Washington Nationals as a pitcher back in 2005. Decided to continue his college football punting. And now in his first year at North Carolina as the Tar Heel punter. Well, Kevin, you hate to say this is a big series, but the Pirates are going to have to start showing some spark on offense here as the offense comes out to start this series at the 14-yard line. Yeah, aside from that screenplay, they really have put together a couple good plays back-to-back. -back. First down and 10, Pirates with the ball, their own 14-yard line. Pinckney, play action, looks, throws, right side, and it's almost picked off. And we got a late flag across the field, away from the ball. Patrick, it was Goddard, Jermaine Goddard, young man from just up the road in Robertsonville at Roanoke High School, defending on the play. And it's going to bring up second down and 10. We've got another penalty call coming up here against the Pirates. It's like an illegal receiver downfield. Pirates had 12 penalties last week at Virginia Tech. They had only 38 penalties all season last year. We'll get the official call here. That is the call, and the Pirates penalized one more time here in this first quarter. So, Pirates going the wrong way. Ball back to the nine-yard line. First down, 15 yards to go. East Carolina back at its own nine. Field position, not been very good for the Pirates here in this first quarter. This time they come out, two receivers left and two right. Out of the shotgun. Pinkney will hand it off, they'll keep it conservative. Dominic Lindsay the 11-yard line. Dominic Lindsay he picks up a couple. Yards. Brings up second down and 13. Mark Pascal stepped up. So Made the hit for North, North Carolina. Miley Taylor also making another hit. He's been all over the second field the for the Tar Heels tonight. He's one of their veteran guys up front. They have a lot of youth on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball for North Carolina with Butch Davis. Starting the program in Chapel Hill, playing a lot of young kids. Second down and 13 now coming up for the Pirates. East Carolina backed up at its own 11-yard line. Philip Henry in motion to the right side, out of the shotgun this time. Pinckney turns right, throws, ball is caught, and then here comes help, and the Tar Heels nail the receiver right at the 15-yard line. Darrell Mapp was there again. That's his That's second big hit. To number 10, Jamar, Bryant. Jamar Bryant was clobbered. Also, Wesley Flagg was right behind. And it brings up third down and nine Wesley for East Carolina Flagg after the four-yard pickup. And, and three, we saw a physical team last week, Kevin, in Virginia nine. Tech. I'll tell you what, Tar Heels have come out hitting in this one tonight. They have Darrell Mapp, a former walk-on. This is now third year starting. He's certainly proven himself as a great player with the Tar Heels so far. Another kid that was a walk-on. Out of Burlington. Third down and nine. Pirates in the shotgun at the 15. Let's see what they come up with on third down and nine. Pinkney in the pocket, stepping up. He's going to air it deep. Got a man out there, just overthrown at the 40 yard line. Tried to hit Philip Henry. He had a step on the defender, Deontay Williams. Couldn't catch up with the ball. Pinkney heard that one out pretty good, Kevin. Nice looking throw that time by Patrick. I think Philip didn't kick it in gear until he saw it. It was a little bit over his head. It was a second too late, but it was downfield open and had a chance to make a play. Here's Matt Dodge in now to punt it away. He'll try to atone for that 12-yard punt earlier in the quarter. Back deep, the ever-dangerous Brandon Tate. Dodge with the punt. It's a high punt coming to the near sideline. Tate's going to watch this one bounce, and it's going to get a great roll for the Pirates and go out of bounds at the 23-yard line. So a much better punt that time. 
And the Pirates do a good job downfield covering it. 62 yards on the punt that time by Dodge. And the Pirates will come out with their defense at the 23-yard line. North Carolina starts at its own 23. 2-10 to go, first quarter. North Carolina 10, East Carolina 7. And Marty Fuhrer, let's see if the Pirates can get a three downs and out here. Yeah, they certainly could use that, try to swing the momentum. And guys, you're right. Right now, North Carolina's defense is dominating right now as far as the unit being the most physical. Lenahan with the ball over center. The big man out of Marietta, Georgia, 290-pound center. They throw it out of the backfield. It's caught out of the backfield. To the 30 is White, 35 to the 40. He's up to the 42-yard line. Johnny White had a great career at Asheville High School. Pierre Bell stepped up, made the tackle. He ran for 5,133 yards. At Asheville High School, had 49 yards last week against JMU. He was the leading rusher. 18 yards on the play. Over the Dukes. Great pass play North that Carolina. time. Again, just a little At dump the yard line. to the near sideline, out of the backfield, and it picks up 18 yards at the 41-yard line. North Carolina with the football, first and 10 at its own 41-yard line. Three receivers out left. Man in motion. Now sets up. Richie Rich behind the quarterback, and Rich gets the ball, goes to the right side, got a big blocker in front. He blocks one pirate to the ground, and then he's hit and gets away and drives forward inside the 50 to the 48-yard line. Pirates thought he was stopped, and he kept those big legs churning, and he picked up about three or four yards before Fred Wilson finally got him on the ground. A lot of different offensive sets right now coming from Carolina. You see Rich line up as a receiver, then go back in the backfield, and they give the ball to him, something the Pirates haven't seen thus far. And the, the heels now really keep the Pirates off balance. First down and 10, North Carolina at the Pirate 47-yard line. 55-year-old Butch Davis in his first year in North Carolina. The head coach of the Cleveland Browns from 2001 to 2004. And he has two losses against the Pirates when he was at Miami. And our first man through this time. It's wide and he is hit and dropped hard. Loss of a yard on the play back to the 48-yard line. Zach Slade and Jeremy Chandler, Chandler stepped up the and made the hit for the Pirates at the 48 yard line. Big play by the Pirate defense. Play. This is as aggressive Second a defense as I've seen from the Pirates in a long, long time. And the Heels recognize this. That's why they're doing a lot of things to keep us off balance. A lot of screens, a lot of passes out to the wides. And so they're, they're really doing different things. But when they come right at us, I think the Pirates are ready for that. Brandon Tate goes out wide to the left side. Man in the slot is Brooks Foster. He's in the slot to the right side. Here's Yates, short drop, throws Foster's way, and then it's caught at the 44-yard line by Akeem Mix, and he's wrapped up right at the 44. The After a pickup of about three yards, Jeremy Chambliss and Travis Williams Travis stepping Williams up, making the shot. tackle for East Carolina. Yards. May have time for one Third more play, and that's going to be it here in the first quarter. North Carolina 10, East Carolina 7. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. Tar Heels huddle up. They're going to let the clock go ahead and wind out. They come to the line of scrimmage, and that's the end of the first quarter. After one, our scoring Greenville, North Carolina 10, East Carolina 7. Back with Hoare, second quarter, play-by-play -play action. Yeah, After this man, network man. time, we just got a score in the booth. Michigan losing to Oregon today, 38-7. to Oregon, much like Appalachian State, plays that wide-open offense where they stretch out a very mobile quarterback who can run and who can throw. And watching that Michigan defense last week, those kind of teams are going to give them a lot of trouble getting. We're starting to see what those preseason rankings really mean. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing, right? <laughs> Michigan was ranked fifth. Maybe a little bit on reputation. Third down and six. We start the second quarter. Tar Heels have the ball at the Pirate 44-yard line. Third and six coming up. One receiver out wide to the left side. Back in the pocket. Here's Yates throwing, and it's incomplete. A little contact at the 39-yard line. Gary Hewitt. Bump Brandon Tate just a bit. It's going to bring up fourth down and six yards to go. Defense finally starting to put it together, Jeff, and that's good because the offense is a little sluggish right now. Need to stop that momentum of the heels. The Eels are going to bring their punting unit on. First punt was a good one for Terrence Brown. 49 yards. He'll have another one coming up. That's been his average through the first Terrence game Brown and the quarter of 11. This one Rogers. coming up. He'll try and back hit the Pirates, the Pirates back deep. Steven Rogers is back at his own 10-yard line. Return man out of Augusta, Georgia. 
And there is the punt by Brown. He sails it up in the air, and Stephen Rogers calls for a fair catch and takes it at about the nine and a half. Gets the so line. the Pirate offense with their work cut out for a Marty Fuhrer. They're backed up deep. Once again, field position's not been a friend of the Pirates here in this first half. No, it really hasn't. And another thing that hasn't been a friend has been yards on first down. The Pirates have to pick up some yards on first down to set up the sequence. And Jeff and Kevin, right now it's been second and long, whether it be by penalty or by lack of progress on that first down play. And they need it right now to get this crowd and this momentum back on their side. Game has settled down after fireworks early. 14.49 to go first half. North Carolina leading East Carolina 10 to 7. From the staff, we've got flags all Flag over the, the field. Matt Butler may have jumped the left guard for the Pirates. Taco Bell continues a great tradition this season with an exciting offer on every Pirate football Saturday. All beef tacos are half price at Taco Bell. That's right. Pirate football and half price tacos all day long. Now that's a winning combination. Jeff, the thing you hate about what just happened right there is that we had Dwayne Harris in hoping to catch the heels off guard and the play didn't work out. Now Patrick Pinckney back in the game. And behind the chains again, first down and 15. Patrick Pinckney's back in there at quarterback, operating out of the shotgun. Three receivers out wide to the right side. Here's Pinckney rolling right, looking downfield, dumps it off, caught by Jamar Bryant at the 10, and he's going down at about the 12 yard line. So the Pirates got about seven of them back. He's gonna bring up second down and about Charles eight Brown yards to go. Kendrick Williams and Charles Brown making the tackle. Carolina goes all over the country and recruits. Charles Brown is out of Maple Heights, Ohio. He was a high school teammate yeah, of the starting play. tight end, Richard That'll Quinn. Bring up second down and seven. Second down, seven yards to go for the Pirates. Still backed up deep at their own 13-yard line. North Carolina 10, East Carolina 7, 14-14 to go first half. This time it's Dwayne Harris back in at quarterback. He keeps it over the left side either. and gets about two yards to the 16-yard line going to bring up third down and four yards to go. Making the tackle, Mark Pascal and Alaric Mullins. He's back up the defensive tackle out of East Wake High School. Listed as the second best high school player in the state of North Carolina when he came out of East Wake. Third down, four yards to go. See what the Pirates come up with here on third down and four. They'll operate out of the shotgun at the 15-yard line. Pinckney looking, looking, flushed. Now rolling right. Now has daylight. It closes quickly, and he's wrapped up and tackled back at the 10-yard line. The it was E.J. Wilson leading the charge that e. time, the making the sack back at the 10-yard line. We heard so much about that Virginia Tech defense last week, Kevin. I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed with this North Carolina yards. defense. Oh, this front Thank seven God is good, Jeff. Running. You got two, uh, well, one true freshman, one true sophomore in there. Larry yeah, Mullins and Marvin Austin, that both highly recruited Tar guys. E.J. Wilson, converted guy, also good. Fourth down and ten. Pirates will have to punt it away from the ten-yard line. Here is Tate, catches it on the run, and then he stumbles forward to the 48-yard line. Forty yards on the punt. Carolina, again, outstanding field position. They'll begin this drive at the Brandon East Carolina 48 yard line. Leon Best and the tackle for the Pirates line. at the 48 yard Leon line. Leon Best with the stop for the Pirates. Hold everything. We've also got a flag up field. Flag on the play. Gonna have a hold against the Pirates. Holding, holding against East Carolina. And North Carolina will talk it over on the sideline after the hold. And Marty again for the Pirates. They're backed up again here. Carolina starting this drive in East Carolina territory. And they'll probably get better field position because I think that was considered post-possession, Jeff, which means they'll probably mark it off as they do now after the return. You're exactly right. Marty on the sideline with our Verizon wireless mic. And at the 39-yard line is where they are going to spot the ball. So, Kevin, Pirate defense really backed up. That's strange. You don't usually see that where it's marked off after the possession, especially since... Carolina was returning the ball. You think the holding call would go against them, but wow, that really hurt the Pirates right there. North Carolina 10, Pirates 7, 12.53 to go first half. Carolina comes out. They start this drive at the Pirate 39-yard line. T.J. Yates at quarterback. Receivers left and right. Yates fakes the handoff, pumps, goes, man, wide open. Behind the Pirate secondary's in. Touchdown, North Carolina. 
TJ Yates to Brandon Tate. He got behind Travis Williams, and the Pirate blows in the secondary continue here tonight, just like they happened last Saturday in Blacksburg. A little pump and go from TJ Yates, and he hits Tate in full stride. 16 to 7, Carolina. 12:46 well, to go, first half. Jeff Travis Williams is a very aggressive corner. He fights and jumps on a lot of routes. He, he jumped on the on the uh, pump right there, and TJ Yates just made a beautiful throw. Well, that kid can really throw the ball. Here's the extra point now, coming up from Connor Burns. Ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. Carolina with some big plays through the air. 12.46 to go, first half. North Carolina 17. East Carolina 7. I am folding the pants. The pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? No. They go on Everyday moments can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. 12.46 to go, first half. Tar Heels have hit the Pirates with another big pass play, and they lead it 17-7. to Kevin, we go back to last week. The Pirates gave up only 17 points all game long to Virginia Tech, and as you know, the defense only gave up 10 points in that game. So this defense that played so well, they've got the shore things up here the rest of the night. Well, Virginia Tech really was hurting at the quarterback position. Sean Glennon, not great at the position, and so they were trying to run the ball, and the Pirates looked really good against the run. They looked pretty good against the run today, but against the pass, they're really not doing very well, and guys are running open in the secondary all day long. They've got to get it together, or this could be a blowout. They've really got to settle down and start covering these receivers. Nate's on the UBE stat sheet, 7 out of 14, 169 yards and two TDs. And everything the Pirate coaches told me this week is true. This kid really throws a nice ball. I tell you what, Kevin, he looks like a senior out there to me instead of a freshman. 169 yards and two TDs already. Had 130 yards in the first quarter alone, and he looks confident. When your quarterbacks get confident, he's going to start making a lot of good throws. Chris Johnson back at his own goal line. Jonathan Williams is at his 11-yard line. Connor Barth with the kickoff, and he booms this one down to Chris, who's the yard deep, and he's coming out. Five. 10, 15, 20, got the corner turn, 25, and then Blue Shirts get him at the 29-yard line. The ever dangerous Chris Johnson brings it out to the 29. Matt Merletti making the tackle for North Carolina. The Pirates will have it first and 10. At their own 29-yard line. Marty, we're starting to sound a little redundant here, but the Pirates need to show some spark with this offense. And an animated Skip Holtz was with that offensive unit right before they came out. And this is a crucial series because, guys, there is no rhythm on this offense right now. And you can almost see Carolina just daring them to throw the ball once they get into second and third and long. Ball is at the 29-yard line. Fred Hicks over the ball at center. They'll operate out of the shotgun. Patrick Pinkney at quarterback, turns, hands off, and... Nothing back to the line of scrimmage, and Dominic that's it. Lindsay on the carry for the Pirates. Dominic Lindsay. No gain on the play. Brings up second down again. E.J. Wilson and Ken Juan Balmer making the tackle. Let's get a station no break in. Piratewear.com is your online source for everything ECU. Featuring all of your favorite ECU licensed products at the click of a button. Piratewear.com, a division of UBE. Ten seconds for station ID on the Pirate ISP Sports Network. You're watching ECU TV. Second down and 10, Pirates to the line of scrimmage, their own 29. Pinckney out of the shotgun, looks, fires, and it's dropped by Devon Drew. He was wide open at the first down marker, and the junior out of Newburn could not hang on. It brings up third down and 10. Darrell Mapp, pass coverage for Carolina. And Kevin, the running game's not doing much, and even when Pat Pinckney is on target, Guys are having a hard time hanging on to the ball. That's a second draw. And you don't see that a lot from Devon Drew. He's a sure-handed tight end. That's why they have him in there. Really, really makes things happen. That's really tough on your quarterback right there when you drop a wide open. Third down and 10 now coming up for the Pirates at their own 29-yard line. Operating out of the shotgun is Pinkney, the junior out of Fayetteville and Pine Forest High School. Drops back, looks, steps up, in trouble. Now dumps it off, and it is complete. 
for about a two-yard pickup. That's it. Complete to number 24, Dominic Lindsay. Dominic Lindsay out of the backfield was crushed by three Tar Heels as soon as he caught the football at the 32-yard line. Yeah, brings up fourth down and eight. Carolina. It was Bernie yeah, and yards. Taylor making the tackle for North Carolina. Fourth down coming up. Eight yards to go for the Pirates, and here comes Matt Dodge. Matt Dodge. Again, we saw too much Brandon of Matt last week. He had to punt nine Carolina. times in Blacksburg. This will already be his fourth punt here. We're only into the second quarter, and there is the punt. And this one's coming up a little bit short. Takes a roll, picked up by Tate at the 27-yard line. Trying to go wide. He's trying to look for a block. He's trying to reverse field now. He turns back into the middle of the field and gets to the 30-yard line. So the Tar Heels will have it first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Jay Sunholder making the tackle. And Kevin, the way this Carolina offense has moved the ball, Pirates are going to have to come up with a defensive stand right here. If they score again, the Pirates are really going to be behind the eight ball. Yeah, and they need to stay in it. They need to stay energized. This East Carolina defense, DBs have to have short memories. They can't worry about getting beat. The play before, the series before, they got to stay in there and keep chugging along and try to make a play. 10.58 to go first half. North Carolina 17, East Carolina 7. Late flag was thrown, and now the official comes to the sideline. It was thrown right at the sideline and picks it up. I think it was one of those inadvertent flags. He picks it up and sticks it back in his pocket. That's the reason for the momentary delay. North Carolina taking their good old time. Across the way, they've not come back out on the field yet. They're still huddled around their coaching staff. North Carolina, only 22 yards rushing, but 191 yards through the air on the UBE stat sheet. That was a penalty against North Carolina. Came late, so the official did penalize the Tar Heels on the run back, and they'll spot the ball back at the 19-yard line. First and 10, North Carolina at its own 19-yard line. And a motion is Rome. Quarterback looks, throws, complete to Rome. He's hit and dropped at the 25. He picks up six across the way. It'll bring up second down to Leon Best and Pierre Bell making the tackle. Pierre Bell had that interception for the Pirates. Leon Best and Pierre Bell last week, the junior out of Vanceboro. Second down and four yards now coming up four. for Carolina. It's our Domino's Pizza Pirate halftime huddle coming up at halftime. Ladies and gentlemen, for Ashley and Nettie Owen. In the slot to the left side is Brooks Foster out of Boiling Springs. Ashley and Nettie four Owen catches under the last week. And the win over James Madison. Big play guy. He had a couple of touchdown passes. They hand the ball off to the right side. There's the running back, Richie Rich, going for the... First down marker. Looks like he's a little bit short on the far sideline. Pierre Bell ran him out of bounds on the Carolina sideline. And it'll bring up third down for Carolina. Pirates are home next Saturday. Same time. Same station. Southern Miss in town next Saturday. This one is a big one tonight, Kevin. Next week, equally as big, maybe even bigger, a Conference USA game against Southern Miss. Yeah, definitely a little bit bigger. Because of bowl situations and, and conference championships, that's Southern Miss game next week. Third down and one. Pirates looking for a stop. Ball is at the 27-yard line. Receivers left and right. Drum is in motion to the right side on third and one. Yates turns, handoff right side, struggling forward. The ball carrier, Anthony Elzey. And the spot's going to be Anthony critical Elzey here. On the carry. Chris Maddox was there. Fred Wilson was there for East Carolina. Chris Maddox on the head for the Pirates. Initial hit was in the backfield, Jeff, but he yards. fell forward to pick up the first down. Just did get the first down. They motioned the chain gang to first move on upfield. Carolina. And it's first and 10 for Carolina. The Pirates, Kevin, having a hard time getting their defense off the field this first half. Yeah, they are, and they're trying to rotate some guys in and out to keep fresh legs in. I think we see Khalif Mitchell now for the first time. Yep, Khalif is in there for the first time. He mispracticed on Wednesday. He was sick. First down and 10. Quick pitch coming to the left side. They string it out to the 30, to the 35, to the 40-yard line is Richie Rich. Out of Marietta, Georgia, the sophomore. Didn't do much last week against James Madison. Minus two yards rushing, in fact. C.J. Wilson and Pyra Bell making the hit. This offense keeps you off balance, Kevin. They can throw the ball to the backs. They can throw it deep. They've got a good running game going. 
And the Pirates just a little bit off their game defensively in the first half. This time, handoff goes straight up the middle. Johnny, Johnny White, White freshman out of Asheville, grinds forward and picks up about five. Khalif Mitchell, big fella out of Virginia Beach, transferred to South East Carolina, Carolina from North Carolina. Played for the Tar Heels a couple six, of years. Second down four. Had 28 tackles in his last year at North Carolina. Transferring in to ECU. Talked a big game all week about how he couldn't wait to get out there and play against the Tar Heels. Second down and four. He's in there now. Ball is at the 46-yard line. Two receivers right and one to the left. Handoff right side. Richie Rich is hit and dropped down at about the 45-yard line. Pirates meeting that time and throwing for a loss of a yard. C.J. Wilson and Khalif Mitchell there for East Carolina right at the 45-yard line. A lot of second unit guys in there. The man child is in there. Linville Joseph, a true freshman. 6'6", 340 pounds. Tar Heels have the ball. Third down, a long four for the Tar Heels. The Pirates need to stop them right here. Third and four coming up. Everybody inside the Carolina three receivers to the right side. Yates, play action, in trouble. Runner right, Zach Slate's after him. He could catch him, and he runs him out of bounds on the far sideline. That's Zach Slate right there. He's got a motor. He can run all day, and he was chasing Yates. Another five yards, he would have caught him, but he runs him out of bounds on the far sideline. And North Carolina will have to punt the ball away. I love to watch Zach Slate play, Kevin, because he's got that motor, and I love to watch him on a play like that. Oh, he can run. He was even quicker last year, put on 20 pounds so that he could battle against his offensive tackles. He can still run really, really well. Jeff that offensive series right there, Carolina really tried to run the football, showed that they couldn't. So hopefully I like to see him run a lot more than I like to see him pass, I tell you that. Here's the punt coming up. Terrence Brown in for his third punt of the first half. Back deep is Steven Rogers. He'll run up and catch it. And then fumble the ball. He got back on it at the 18-yard line. So the Pirates start deep again, their own 18-yard line with 8.07 to go. In the first half, North Carolina with the lead. 17-7. Tar Heels lead it over the Pirates. We're coming back to a sold-out Downey Pimpton Stadium. Bagwell Field after this local timeout. And now this word on the Pirate ISB Sports Network. 8.07 to go in the first half. Jeff Charles along with Kevin McGraw. David Horn in the booth. Marty Fuhr on the sideline with our prize wireless sideline nine game. Marty, the Pirates again were sounding redundant here in this first half. Bad field position to get the start this run. It is bad field position. So the Pirates have to get in the position to, to flip it, but you got to pick up the initial first down and get it going here. Patrick Pinkney under center. Gets the snap back. Rolls left, stops, looks, pumps, throws. Man out there's Jamar Bryant, and he catches the football in stride at the 30-yard line. Tackled at the 30-yard line. Jamar Bryant with the big catch. Kendrick Williams makes the tackle. Big pass play. Patrick Pinney aired that one out beautifully, Kevin. Nice completion to Jamar Bryant. Jeff, this crowd has kind of been sitting and waiting for something to scream about. That was a great play right there. Patrick Pinney with good touch on it. Jamar Bryant ran under it. You like to see it throw just a little bit farther so we can keep running. But hey, that's a great throw to catch. First down of 10, Pirates. That wakes up this huge crowd in Greenville. Pirates with the ball at the Carolina 32-yard line. 50 yards on the pass play from Pickney to Jamar Bryant. Ball at the Carolina 32-yard line. Philip Henry in motion to the left side. Here's Pickney. Turn, handoff, Chris Johnson. We had activity at the line of scrimmage, and it may have been Josh Kaufman with an illegal procedure call against the Pirates. And boy, these offensive line mistakes must be driving Steve Shankweiler, the offensive line coach, absolutely crazy. Another one here against East Carolina. We're playing some young guys up there, but Josh Kaufman's the senior, and so is Matt Butler, the left side of the line with Kaufman and Butler there, the seniors, then the rest of the line, Hicks, Palmer, and DJ Scott. They're the youngsters. First and 15, ball is at. The 37-yard line, Pickney, short drop, and now he decides to take off and run, and Pickney goes to the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Pick up the lead on the play, brings up second down, and seven yards to go. Hiley Taylor was there, Mark Pascal there. Mark Pascal Carolina. The hit for North Carolina. Patrick Pickney's father, very proud papa these days. Second down Reggie seven. Pickney, Reggie played for the Pirates in the 70s, played five years in the NFL, played with... Baltimore Colts played with the Detroit Lions, drafted in the sixth round in 1976, and he's been an educator in Fayetteville for the last 26 years. Second down and seven. 
Ball is at the 29-yard line. Pinkney looks, fires to the left side. It's caught by Henry. Goes to that first down marker, and then, man, he blasted backward. Probably got about a yard short of the marker and then pushed back, got to about the 23. Tar Heels have really come hitting. Goddard was there. Deontay Williams also there for Carolina. Looks like the Pirates are just a little bit short of the first down. Going to bring up third down and one for East Carolina at the Carolina 23-yard line. Clock moves on, 6-12 to go first half. North Carolina 17, East Carolina 7. Pirates are driving at the 22-yard line. Dominique Lindsay and Chris Johnson in the eye for the Pirates. Pick the under center. Jay Sunholder, the tight end, goes from right to left. Handoff goes to Dominique Lindsay. He's driving forward, and the spot's going to be critical here. Didn't get a whole lot off that left side with Kaufman and Butler leading the way. Tavares Brown was there. So was the middle linebacker, Wesley Flagg, out of Jack Britt High School. Number 34, Pierre Bell on the carry. And let's see where they're going to mark it here. Spot is going to be critical. And it looks like we're going to have a measurement coming up. Marty, you're on the sideline. Have you got a good vantage point on this one? Guys, the Pirates were not pleased with the spot, but where it looks across the way, I think he might have it by the nose of the football, but barely. But already the Pirates are looking at the fourth down play just in case. Marty didn't sound confident, Jeff. Did not sound confident. <laughs> but Marty was wrong. <laughs> Marty's very seldom wrong. <laughs> Got it by the nose of the football. Attaboy, Marty. Pirates get the first down. Ball is at the 22-yard line. First and 10, East Carolina at the North Carolina 22-yard line. Tar Heels 17, Pirates 7, 5.43 to go first half. Three receivers are out wide to the right side. Chris Johnson's out now. He's split out wide right. Here's Dwayne Harris running the option to the left side, and they jump on his back and corral him down the at the 20 yard line. Balmer again Game making two. the tackle, got him up high after about a two Bring yard run by Dwayne Harris. Brings up second down and eight yards to again, go. Dwayne Harris, redshirt freshman out of Tucker High School, Stone Mountain, Georgia. Played last week briefly at Virginia Tech. He's a great athlete. Didn't play a lot in the spring because he had a wrist injury. Thought they were going to use him as a wide receiver, but then when the unfortunate situation occurred with Rob Cass, they said, we better get this guy ready again. Second down and eight. Harris, handoff, up the middle, ball carrier, hit after about a two-yard run by Chris Game Johnson. That's about it. Third down and seven now coming up for the Pirates. Clock moving along, 443 to go. Carolina, leading East Carolina, 17 to seven. Ballmer. And Bruce Carter, the young man out of Havelock, starting today in place of the injured Chase Rice, stepped up and the tackle for the Tar Heels. First quarter went really slow, Jeff. A lot of passing this quarter, a lot of running. It's going fast. Third down, seven. Irons with the football at the Tar Heel, 19 yard line. Out of the shotgun. Pinkney looking over the middle. Still looking, flushed. Now dumps it off. It is caught. And the receivers hit and drop inside the 15 and about the 14-yard line. Dominic Lindsay makes the catch. Darrell Mack and Mark Pascal making the tackle for Carolina. He's short of the first down. They'll spot it at about the 14, and the yard marker is about the 12-yard line. Got to get the points here. Got to get the fourth down and two. Fourth down and one. They decide on the sideline to send in the field goal kicker, and here comes Ben Hartman. Ben Hartman did not attempt a field goal last week at Virginia Tech. Last year, he was 3 of 5. He backed up the general, Robert Lee. 3 out of 5 last year. The young man out of Winston-Salem and North Davidson High School will spot it down at the 21. It'll be a 31-yard attempt. It is up, and the kick is no good. Ben Hartman missed the field goal. A chip shot field goal. Sails wide left. And so the Pirates get the big 50-yard pass play. Move the ball right down the field, get to the 20-yard line, and come up empty on the missed field goal by Ben Hartman. 3.27 to go, first half, North Carolina 17, East Carolina 7, the Tar Heels. Dodge a three-point bullet as Ben Hartman hooks it left. And North Carolina will start this offensive series at its own 20-yard line, first down and 10 at its own 20-yard line with 
We resume play here in the second quarter. Coming up at halftime is our Domino's Pizza Myrick halftime huddle. Marty's special guest with our Verizon Wireless Mike will be Jeff Blake, former great pirate. Jeff led the 1991 East Carolina Pirates to a number nine national ranking and a beach ball victory over North Carolina State in Atlanta in the last game played in Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Jeff then went on to a very productive career in the National Football League, played five years with the Cincinnati Bengals, played in the Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles, in town this weekend, going into the Hall of Fame on October the 6th, and he will be Marty's special guest at halftime. Ball is at the 20-yard line, first down and 10 for North Carolina at its own 20-yard line. Back to pass as Yates looks, throws, and he one-hops the receiver incomplete. It'll bring up second down and 10. Quinton Cotton has been on the play. The first time that I can remember second right there, Jeff, ten. Jay Ross gets a hit on Yates, and Yates goes down, and so you want to see that. You want to see the quarterback getting hurried. That's going to cause him to throw some balls a little bit high. Hopefully we can pick one off. Jay Ross hobbled off the field last week in Blacksburg, but he was back practicing this week, and he's good to go tonight. Second down and 10. Three receivers wide to the right side. Yates turns, handoff left side. Runner coming to this side, and he's pumped out of bounds hard at the 23 Rich yard line. Big hit by Jerry Hewitt. And a four yard long and play. Richie Rich got popped pretty good, and Jerry Hewitt on the stop. He gets knocked down right in front of the Pirates. Third next. down and six. And it brings up third down and six now for the Tar Heels. Official attendance tonight 43,387. That's a packed change of more. The stadium seats 43,000. Ball is at the 24-yard line. The bell tolls for the defense on third down and six. Pirates need a three downs and out. T.J. Yates, freshman out of Marietta, Georgia. Back to pass. Pumping, throwing. It's caught. The receiver did not get to the first down marker. He's about two yards short. Ball's going to be placed down at the 29. Had to get just past the 30. Fred Wilson and Pierre Bell making the tackle. Going to be fourth down, about two yards to go. Pirates get the three downs and out. And Carolina has to bring Terrence Brown back in to punt it away again. Pirates really have the momentum right now, Jeff. You hate to see him not get that three points, but they'd be within a touchdown right here. Change in the return, man. Wayne Harris back there now to return the punt instead of Steven Rogers. Wayne Harris with better speed. Terrence Brown will kick this one away. Line of scrimmage, the 28-yard line. It's a high... Sailor, Harris has it. Harris gets away from one, gets away from two. Harris takes it straight up the gut, across the 45, to the 47 yard line. 17 yard punt return for Dwayne Harris. Wesley Flying stepped up and made the tackle. 44 yards on the punt and a good return by Dwayne Harris and a down tar heel at the 43 yard line. They're going to have to come out and take. A look at the down North Carolina Tar Heel. 2.20 to go in the first half. Pirates trail North Carolina. 17 to 7 is our score. Pirate fans, you can turn to the Daily Reflector and Reflector.com first thing tomorrow to catch the score and the highlights of today's game in the Daily Reflector. Not sure exactly what happened to the down Tar Heel. He's down at the 43 yard line. It's been a very physical game here tonight, Kevin. That's the second Tar Heel that's been down. You hate to speculate who's down, Jeff, but I'm fairly sure it was 31, Tremaine Goddard, who's also an Eastern North Carolina kid, so I'm sure he's got a lot of fans in the stands. Yeah, from Roanoke High School in Robertsonville. Marty, can you tell if it is uh, Tremaine who's down? It is, guys. It's coming up now. I don't know if he had the wind knocked out of him. Uh, it does not look like it's, it's a leg injury, so that's good news, but Guys, what an absolutely huge defensive stand there for the Pirates. Because after the missed field goal, you could feel the air come out of this crowd. And the last thing the Pirates could do is let North Carolina go down the field and add to this lead. But now, not only, not only did they stop them, but they've given this offense good field position and still 2.20 to go in the half to try to get on the board. First down and 10 for the Pirates. They come out to the line of scrimmage at their own 47-yard line, needing some points. 2.20 to go, first half. North Carolina, 17. East Carolina, 7. Out of the shotgun. Pinckney looking, stepping up. Look out, backside pressure. He has to dump it away as he's going down incomplete. Second down and 10 coming up. Kylie Taylor was there again. Boy, he's a handful of the block coming off the edge. And also Darius Massenburg was there for North Carolina. 
And got to ask some questions about this offense now, Kevin. We're six quarters just about into it. Seven points at Virginia Tech. And only seven points there. We're almost at halftime against North Carolina. Moving slow here in this game. Nice job that time of Patrick getting the ball, getting rid of the ball and not taking the sack. So they're going to have to pick it up. Second down and ten coming up. Two receivers right, two to the left. Harris is now playing in a wide out position. Pinckney is back. Pinckney looking, throwing to the left side. It is caught at the 49 yard Patrick line. Pinckney's pass complete to number 10. Jamar, Jamar Bryant, Bryant makes the catch. Only about four yards. Darrell Mapp. Kendrick Bryant. North Carolina brings up Eight third down yards, and just about six. six and a half yards to go. Clock stops on the out of bounds pass. 2.09 to go. North Carolina 17, East Carolina 7. Third down, six to go for the Pirates. Patrick Pinckney is taking the majority of the snaps. We've seen Dwayne Harris briefly here in the first half. Steven Rogers out wide to the right side. Pinckney stepping up, looks, fires, it's caught! Philip Henry, the catch in the middle of the field. Then he's hit and dropped to the 30 yard line. Patrick Pinckney with a good pass. He threaded the needle on that one, got it to Philip Henry. Philip Henry is the senior out of Elizabeth City, the former walk on. Deontay Williams, Charles Brown making the tackle. First down, Pirates. First and 10, East Carolina at the North Carolina 29 yard line. Starting to see some life in this offense. Last two series look pretty good. Pinckney operating out of the shotgun on first down and 10. Pinckney looks, turns, fires left side, caught by Harris. And Dwayne lowers that right shoulder and gets to about the 26. Picked up four. Darrell Mapp making the tackle, and we've got a timeout on the field. 144 to go, first half. North Carolina 17. East Carolina 7. Back in a sold out Downey Ficklin Stadium after this. Network timeout. On second down and seven, Patrick Pinkney gets the snap back out of the shotgun. Rolling right, throws on the run. It is caught by Lindsey. Makes the first man miss. And he's hit and dropped. He's got the first down at the 16-yard line of the Tar Heels here on the near sideline. Mark Pascal knocks him out of bounds on the near sideline. First and 10 Pirates at the Carolina 16-yard line. Great job by Patrick Pinkney staying alive and finding Lindsey there on the sideline. Even better job of Lindsey getting out of bounds. And Lindsey made that first Carolina tackler miss, picked up the first down. Pinkney, 12 out of 15, 201 yards, sneaks up on you. He did, snuck right up on you. Me too. Well, first down and 10 Pirates at the 16-yard line. Three receivers out wide to the left side. Pinkney looking, throwing, throwing short. It's incomplete at the 10-yard line. Trying to get the ball to Devon Drew. Couldn't get it to him. Second down and 10 coming up. Kendrick Williams out of Sharp, former walk-on. Paid his dues. Not only got a scholarship, but he's starting in his senior season at that left corner spot for North Carolina. Second down and 10 now coming up for the Pirates. Jeff, the Pirates get the ball back in the second half, so I'm sure Coach Holtz is telling him, just take care of the football. It's another time we got to get points. Last time they were down here, Ben Hartman missed a 30-yard field goal attempt. It sailed wide left. Down here again. Well, you can't blow those red zone scoring opportunities. Second down and 10. Out of the shotgun. Pinckney looking downfield again. Looking, throwing, man wide open. Catching the ball, Devon Drew. Touchdown Pirates. The big tight end was wide open over the middle. 17, 13, Pirates with a touchdown. 1, 26 to go in the first half. Devon Drew atoning for the drop he had earlier a couple series ago. Great job of getting open that time and making the kick. Here's the extra point now for Ben Hartman. Boy, that is big right before halftime. Hartman has the extra point coming up. Rainer to snap it, slow to home. It's up and it's good. So the Pirates pull within a field goal. 17 to 14, 126 to go. And if not for the 30 yard miss by Ben Hartman, this was a high football game and Marty I don't think we can emphasize how big that touchdown right there is right before halftime. Then it started with that defensive stance, but Kevin, you can see it on the film upstairs and sure we can see it on the sideline, but that seam up the middle has been open. We've seen a couple of receivers open on that. The Pirates are now getting time for Pinkney to set the feet. And there, again, as we watch on the replay up the stairs on the big board, there's no one picking up the bat coming out. And I like it too, Kevin, when we see four and five receivers going out. They're starting to spread the field pretty good here in this second quarter. And I think he's going
going to work. Yeah, you mentioned Pinkney's stats. He's looking great. Now 216 yards passing, and he's starting to look comfortable. Now, what's huge right here is this kickoff cover. He cannot let, allow Tate to get a big return like he had the last time. Because with a minute 26 left, you want these guys to run the clock out and not try to go down for a score. Patrick seems like he's getting in a better rhythm right now, don't you think, Kevin? Yeah. Definitely getting in a rhythm. His last couple of series have been great. You hate to miss field goal, or we have a tie game right now, but that's okay. They got to stay focused and cover this kick. And the ever dangerous Brandon Tate is back deep. He's taken three kickoffs back for touchdowns in his career. He is a burner. You might want to think of just kicking it short like they did us, you know, kick it away from the guy that's dangerous. Tate is back there. Greg Little's back there as well, but they really like Brandon Tate to return kickoffs. Hartman with the kick, and he will kick this one a little bit short. He's coming up short to the 20-yard line. Fumble there, picked up by one of the up men at the 25. He got it back, and Greg then he's tackled at the 28-yard line. So Carolina will have Chris it. On the head First and 10 at the 28. Chris Maddox out of Newburn, one of five Newburn players on North this East Carolina, Carolina team. Downfield made the hit for the Pirates. You hate to give up that kind of field position, but it's certainly better than Brandon Tate breaking a big one. Ball is at the 29. T.J. Yates, who's been very impressive as the Tar Heel quarterback, trots out out of the shotgun now. First down and 10. Yates is back to throw. Looks, fires to the right side. It's caught at the 40-yard line for the first down and the 11-yard pickup. It was, again, Hicks making the catch. Hicks. Boy, Akeem Hicks is an outstanding player. He had 39 catches last year. He was a freshman All-American. Another guy from Charlotte Independence. What a great high school football program they have had there. First down and 10. Yates looking again, firing it to the right side. It's caught again, and the receiver getting out of bounds on this near sideline. It's Bobby Rome out of Norfolk. Van Eskridge knocked him out of bounds here on the near sideline. Carolina in the hurry up. And they're in pirate territory at the East Carolina. 49-yard line, first down and 10. Yates is going to work on the ball to the sideline here in their two-minute drill. They're going to catch it. you got to keep them in bounds, and you got to tackle them right away. Brandon Tate out wide right. Knicks out wide left. One back set. First down and 10 for the Tar Heels. At the Pirate 49-yard line. Yates is back. Looking, looking. Has all day. Now the pocket collapses, and he's going down. Sack at the 47-yard line. Four-yard sack for the Pirates. Mark Robinson was there. Greg Wilson right behind. Mark Robinson, he's the veteran up front Time for the Pirates, the senior out of Longwood, Florida. 25 straight Loss starts. Three yards on the play. Loss of three. Down 101 to go first half. Timeout, we'll keep it here. Here in Greenville, the lights are on, really becoming effective on the field. And what an incredible sight this is here tonight. Kevin, 43,387 Pirate fans have had this game circled for a long time. And just a great, great crowd. Great night for college football. Oh, it's beautiful. They say the weather's going to dip down into the 70s. It's going to be perfect, perfect football weather. Second down, 13. Ball is at the 48-yard line. Tar Heels have the ball. They're on 48. Yates back to pass. Looks, fires to the right side. And it's picked off. Picked off at the 48-yard line by the Pirates. Jerry Hewitt makes a great grab. He takes that one off the turf as he falls to the turf and scoops it. The turf about a couple of inches before it hit the ground, and Jerry Hewitt with a big time break, a big time play, and the Pirates get the ball back. Kevin, right before I'm done. Jeff, we mentioned it a series ago. Gates knocked down by Ross. Now he's trying to get the ball out a little bit quicker. That's what the freshmen do. And so, wow, great opportunity right there. You wish Derek Hewitt could have kept his feet, but still, the Pirates get the ball right here. Pirates get the ball back first to ten. East Carolina at the North Carolina, 49 yard line. Yates, who was so effective and accurate early, is now kind of one-hopping his receivers. He's made some low throws here in this second quarter. We're not going to get a challenge here, are we? Got a timeout for sure. Let's see if Marty had a look at it field level. Marty, how to look with you? Guys, it was across the way from me. I think he got the hand underneath, but they will challenge. In fact, uh, we'll throw it back up to you. We'll try to go over to the replay booth as well. The play is under review. Play is under review. And this will be a key call here right before halftime with 55 seconds to go. Marty's using that 4-3 speed he's got to hustle over. <laughs> 
Take a look at it. We won't get a comment. He's out of breath. <laughs> He's not bashful. He's going to get right in there and see what they're talking about. The officials are huddling up at the 25-yard line. Again, so there's no confusion. In college football, the booth, the TV monitor is upstairs. The referee is speaking to the off-field official that is actually looking at the replay, unlike the NFL where they have the hood and the official actually sees the play. He's just interpreting and asking questions. And that's what's going on right now. We're getting some type of interpretation from the booth down to the official on the field. It is an interception. There he is. It is an interception. Thanks, Marty, for hustling down there and finding that information out for us. So the Pirates have the ball. First down and 10. East Carolina at the North Carolina. 49 yard line. We got the purple and gold cheer going here tonight at Downey Ficklin Stadium, and they did it a number of times in the free game. Tonight. So let's see if the Pirates can get another score late here in the second quarter. They trail North Carolina 17 to 14. 55 seconds to go in the first half. After review, the play stands is still on the field. It's warm, it's chocolatey, and it's only $3.99 with any purchase. Call or order online. Get the door, it's Domino's. First and 10 Pirates, Carolina, 49-yard line. North Carolina leads East Carolina, 17-14. Patrick Pinckney rolling right, looking, firing on the run. Caught by Stephen Rogers. He gets out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Only two five seconds off the clock. Kendrick Williams on the sideline. Good job of getting out of bounds, but he could have got a few more yards. I think he was a little bit excited and got out of bounds as soon as he could. Ball is at the 43-yard line. Second down and four coming up. Fred Hicks over the ball at center for the Pirates. We saw Stephen Heist, the sophomore out of Cincinnati quite a bit, at center last week in Blacksburg. Out of the shotgun. Five receivers set for the Pirates this time. Three left and two right. Pinckney operates. Has daylight. To the 40-yard line, gets around one, and goes at the 34-yard line. Good run by Patrick Pinkney for the first down. Kendrick Woodman making the tackle for North Carolina. First and 10, Pirates stop the clock. With the change, 41 seconds to go first half. Pirates on the move at the North Carolina 34-yard line. Empty backfield again. Three receivers left, two to the right. Pinkney operates out of the shotgun. Looking left, has time, rolls left. Now dumps it off and throws it over the Carolina bench. Going to bring up second down and 10. Marvin Austin was applying pressure. He is a true freshman out of Washington, D.C. Quite a character. When he signed with North Carolina, he brought his attache case, and they said he was all dressed up. Looked like he just... Stepped out of GQ magazine and he pulled out a Tar Heel cap out of the attache case and put it on his head and said, I'm going to be a Tar Heel. I know rankings don't mean a whole lot in high school, but this kid was rated as the number one defensive lineman in the country. They think he's going to be a great one. 6'3, 295, and a freshman. Second down and 10. Ball is at the 34 yard line. Three receivers left and one to the right. Pinkney looking, stepping up, looking again, flushed out. Now reverses field, going back left, has a lot of daylight, throws on the run, and it's either complete or trapped. It's complete at the 19-yard line. Still have one timeout left, they want to use it. Philip Henry got that ball, made a good catch, right off the turf. First and 10 Pirates, 18 seconds to go. Ball at the 19-yard line. Pinkney spikes it with 16 seconds to go. I guess he wanted everybody to know he was spiking that one. He spiked it, didn't he? He almost <laughs> threw it for the target. Patrick Pinkney down the ball, brings up second down and 10. <laughs> You're right, Kevin. We got a kick out of that. <laughs> Marty, stay away from those spikes down there, okay? I promise I will. <laughs> you know, that was important, too. When you think of it, they need to save that timeout just in case they have to run the field goal unit in. You want to save that one timeout even though you're almost in the red zone. That's a great point, Marty. Great point. Quarterback Phil Petty must have said, when you spike it, make sure you spike it, son. Second down and 10 coming up. Ball is at the 19-yard line. And we've got movement again in that offensive line. Lines come from everywhere. 
may have been D.J. Scott. He had three flags against him last week in Blacksburg. Three different saves against East Carolina. Tape. D.J.'s problem last week is he was just having a hard time hearing the snap count. And, of course, you can understand that with 66,000 in Blacksburg. It was so loud up there last week. Glad and he's just a young running. player. He's a freshman. Still second down. Freshman at a Green Cove Springs, Florida, playing that right tackle spot. Five-yard penalty, second down and 15 coming up. In field goal range, they got to take care of the ball here. Jamar Bryant goes out wide to the right side. Second and 15, only 16 seconds to go in the first half. Pirates trail 17-14. Pinkney now throws back left. Devon Drew catches the ball at the 15 to the 10. Devon Drew is down at actually about the 14-yard line. Drew tackled at about the 14. He was trying to get to the first down marker at the 10. Couldn't quite get there. Kendrick East Burney Carolina. stepped up, made the tackle. Now timeout for the Pirates. They burned their final timeout. Six seconds to go in the first half and a chance to get Hartman on the field for another field goal attempt to tie it at halftime. Well, Marty, it's good to see this Pirate offense on the field here in the second quarter with some nice drives because it's given that defense a chance to rest up a little bit. It has, and Jeff and Kevin, what you've seen, the short passing game has put this offense in rhythm. And all of a sudden, after a couple of quick completions, they were quicker, they had the Tar Heels on their heels. And if they can get a field goal here, I think they'd be happy to get out of the first half even. Peyton is 16 out of 21, 245 yards, and two touchdowns on the UBE statue. Kevin, that yardage especially really has sneaked up on us here tonight because except for one or two explosion plays, as we used to call them. It's just been a lot of nickel and dime throws. I mean, that's a big game right there. I mean, yeah. it's just one half. That's a total game worth of, worth of uh, passing. Yeah, there. Ben 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 great job here to set goal. Here's Ben Hartman in again. They'll spot it at the 23. It'll be a 33-yard attempt. He missed the last one from 30. From the same hash. Same hash. Sloan is in to hold. Rainer will snap it back. There's the kick. It is up, and the kick is good. Ben Hartman has a seconds to go in the first half and the Pirates have come back to tie. Well, East Carolina's put up the last 10 points here in this game. They were down 17 to 7. They get the touchdown to Devon Drew and now they get the 33-yard field goal from Ben Hartman and Marty Fuhrer. All of a sudden, we've got ourselves a brand new ball game. What a difference on this Pirates sideline. Tremendous lift. As you may have mentioned, Kevin, the Pirates will touch the football first on offense to open the second half. Expect to see a script kick here, Jeff. I mean, they, there's no way they can kick this ball deep to Tate. They want to take it into halftime, but nothing happened big, so expect to see a script kick. Our Domino's Pizza Pirate halftime huddle is coming up. Jeff Blake, our halftime guest with Marty. On the field with our Verizon Wireless sideline, Mike Allen York will be updating us on college football scores from across the nation. We'll have all the stats on the UBE stat sheet as well, all coming up at halftime in our Domino's Pizza Pirate halftime huddle. Tate and Little back deep for Carolina. Neither may touch it. Ben Hartman will kick this one off, of course, kicking off from the 30-yard line this year. Pirates have rallied to come back. And they've carried the fight to the Tar Heels in the second quarter. Tied at 17. Hartman with the kick, and he will go ahead and kick it down the middle of the field, and it's going to give Tate a chance. Picks it up at the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, down at the 27-yard line, and that's the end of the first half. Here's Marty going off the field on Crane Wilco. Halftime interview with Skip Holtz. Marty, take a look. Okay, thank you, Jack. The hand. Well, we better because the way we started in this stinker game, it was like we didn't even want to play. We come out here, we have a busted assignment on the first play on defense. We've had 100 penalties. We've had 400 missed assignments. I don't know what the heck is going on. We're going to go in there at halftime and get the guy off the straight. We're lucky as we can be to be sitting here in a tie ball game with all the mistakes we're making as bad as we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Guys, thank you, Marty. <laughs> Our man's a little fired up. Wasn't he, Kevin? A lot fired up, and I'm glad to see it because these guys need to hear this at halftime and come out here. It's a brand new ball game, like you said. It might as well be 0 0. We hope you are enjoying this ECU classic rewind of the Pirates versus the Tar Heels. Presented by ECU Physicians. It's halftime and time to check in with Brian Bailey and Coach Mike Houston. 
All right, it's halftime. East Carolina and North Carolina tied 17-17 in our East Carolina Classic Rewind. You take a look at that first half, and these were two teams in a big rivalry situation, and, and it was really a close game. Coach, you know rivalry games like, like, like the back of your hand. These are really important to everybody here at Dowdy Fickle. No doubt, and you know, I didn't, I didn't realize the, the rivalry between North Carolina and East Carolina until I really got here. And, uh, you know, it goes pretty, it's pretty deep seated. And so uh, what a great day that must have been, especially, you know, with a packed house, uh, capacity crowd. Uh, and it, 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 gets, it gets me excited for this fall. You know, August 29th will be, uh, you know, will be the first college thing, collegiate thing, the first, you know, one of the first sports things done after we get out of this situation with the virus. Uh, I would hope that Dowdy Ficklin Stadium is just like it was back in 2007. Uh, you know, here August 29th this fall for our home opener. So, you know, our fans out there, you know, go ahead and you know mark that on your calendars. We need a packed Daddy Ficklin Stadium this fall. It's going to be week zero, so it is going to be the first college yeah. football game just about in the entire nation. Well, What's it going to be like coming through that tunnel? It's going to be awesome. You know, Notre Dame and Navy play that afternoon in Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, we follow that game up, so it may very well be the first uh, college football game played in the United States this fall. And it's going to be an incredible scene. Uh, you're going to have so many guys playing in their first game as a Pirate. Uh, you're going to have, you know, all the anticipation uh, of the new season. Uh, and you have, you know, everything surrounding the matchup with Marshall and the 50 year anniversary of the plane crash. So there's going to be so much emotion running on both sides on so many different levels. Uh, it'll really be a special environment. All right, coach, let's take a look at some of those first half highlights. North Carolina got on the board first, led it 3 0 when the Pirates came back. Patrick Pinckney on the screen passed to CJ Chris Johnson. 78 yards for the touchdown. Tack on the extra point, and East Carolina had taken a 7 3 lead. But Carolina would pretty much dominate the rest of the first half until late in the second quarter. TJ Yates, the pass to Hakeem Nix, 37 yards for the touchdown. And the Tar Heels had regained the lead. They led it by the count of 10 to 7. And then Yates at it again. This time he finds Brandon Tate, 39 yards for the touchdown. Add the extra point from Connor Barth, and North Carolina led it 17 7. Back come the Pirates. Patrick Pinckney over the middle to Devon Drew, 15 yards for the touchdown. And the Pirates had cut it to three at 17 14. Late in the half, Ben Hartman. From 33 yards out, he connects on the field goal, and East Carolina had tied the game at 17-17. It's halftime, East Carolina 17, North Carolina 17. The game played right here at Daddy Ficklin Stadium. The date was September the 8th, 2007. Skip Holtz, of course, the head coach at East Carolina at that time. Patrick Pinckney, the quarterback, the former third stringer, he put on quite a show. Perhaps it was the coming out party for Patrick Pinckney in this game. We hope you're enjoying this East Carolina Classic Rewind. Time for the start of the second half. The Pirates and the North Carolina Tar Heels tied at halftime, 17-17. Today's contestant in the Greenville Toyota Kickoff Challenge is Jim Presley of Kinston. If the Pirates run the kickoff back, Jim will win a brand new Toyota Camry LE from Greenville Toyota. Register for the Kickoff Challenge at Greenville Toyota or online at ecupirates.com. Greenville Toyota Scion, Eastern North Carolina's leading volume dealer. We would like you to think of not going anywhere else. Good luck to Jim. Jim Presley of Kinston. If the Pirates run the kickoff back, Jim will win a brand new Toyota Camry LE from Greenville Toyota. And Jonathan Williams back the eight for the Pirates. So he has all his faith in Chris Johnson and Jonathan Williams. Chris Johnson standing back at the five. Jonathan Williams standing back at the 12. Jonathan had a return, the true freshman from Greenville Rose in that first half. His first touch as a Pirate. Connor Barth has it on the tee at the 30-yard line. He'll be kicking off from left to right across your Pirate ISB Sports Radio Network dial. We start the second half in front of the fourth largest crowd in the history of Downey Fickman Stadium. 
There's a kick by Barth. It's a high kick. And it's Chris Johnson at the goal line. To the 5, 10, 15. No, he didn't get to the 15. He got to the 14-yard line. And he was tackled. A great one-on-one -on -one tackle made by North Carolina at the 14-yard line. And it will bring up first and 10 for the Pirates as Chris Johnson went down hard just short of the 15-yard line. Jonathan Smith made the tackle downfield for the Carolina Tarians. Great job of Jonathan avoiding the wedge and getting back there and making a great open field tackle. So the Pirates come out now first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. We're tied as we start the second half. East Carolina 17, North Carolina 17. Out of the shotgun. Pinckney looking, fire into the sideline. Steven Rogers catches the ball. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Gain of seven. It brings up second down and three. Charles Brown defending on the play for North Carolina here on the near sideline. That's a big, strong throw that time by Patrick Pinckney. That ball went a long way sideways. Nice job of catching by Steven Rogers. I like to see him lower that shoulder and get upfield. Patrick Pinckney in his first start as a Pirate. So impressive last week at Virginia Tech, 14 out of 25, 56 percent, 115 yards, and it ran for 48 yards against that very tough Hokie defense. Second down and three now coming up for the Pirates as we just start the second half. Pinckney turns, handoff, left side, getting around the corner. Here's Chris Johnson, broke a tackle, and then just ran out of field the at the 28-yard line. Chris gets another step. And he's down that sideline. Wesley, Wesley Flagg, Flagg, the middle linebacker, pushed him out of bounds on this near sideline. Even though Junior Johnson worked with him all offseason about running between the tackles, he knows if he gets to the outside, that's where he's the best. And boy, he almost got him that time. He almost got around that corner. He got the first down at the 28-yard line. First down and 10 for the Pirates at their own 28-yard line. East Carolina trailed 17 to 7 in this one and then came back in the second quarter and scored 10 points. The last 10 points. Well, this game have been scored by the Pirates to go in at intermission at 17-17. High formation, turn, handoff. Chris Johnson drives Chris forward Johnson for two. For right behind his right guard that time, Doug Palmer, up to the 30-yard line. Pickup of two, brings up second down and eight. It was Brown and Mapp making the, the tackle the for North the Carolina. Hills. It's been a long dry spell for the Pirates Eight against two, the Tar Heels. The last eight. East Carolina win, 1975. East Carolina beat North Carolina 38-17 in Chapel Hill. Wide right goes Jamar Bryant. Man in the slot to the right side is Steven Rogers. One set back behind the quarterback, Patrick Pinckney. Second down and eight. Pinckney looks, sees a blue shirt, now rolls and fires, and it's caught at the 45-yard line. And the 50-yard line. Another first down for the Pirates. Devon through the big tight end. Making the catch over the middle. And the Pirates have it at midfield first and 10. East Carolina at the North Carolina 50. Highly Taylor and Darrell Mapp making the tackle for the Tar Heels. And a quick feet. Kevin and Patrick Pinkney kept that play alive. Jeff, there's a lot of quarterbacks that can run with the ball, a lot of quarterbacks that can scramble. Not a whole lot to have the wherewithal to keep their head up and make the throw in the middle of a scramble. Patrick Pinkney is 18 of 23, 272 yards. Having another good ball game. Wide right goes Steven Rogers. Two receivers out wide to the left side, and we've got a timeout goal. Pirates burn a timeout. 13.33 to go, third quarter. Pirates 17, Tar Heels 17. Back with more third quarter of play-by-play -play after this local timeout on the Pirate ISP Sports Network. Pirates had to burn a timeout. They huddled to the sideline. Now come back out on the field right at the 50. 13.33 to go, third quarter. East Carolina 17, North Carolina 17. Patrick Pinckney under center this time. Sends two receivers out wide. Bryant and Rogers out wide to the right side. Staggered eye in the backfield. Pinckney's back to throw. Looks, fires to the sideline, and one hops his receiver. Steven Rogers. That one Patrick Pinckney's out of his hand. Second down and 10. Coming Balls up incomplete. now for... East Carolina. Join us tomorrow, 7 o'clock on the Pirate ISB Sports Network for the RBC Centura. Skip Holt Show, live from Logan's. Come on out of Logan's and be with us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for the RBC Centura Bank. Skip Holt Show, live from Logan's Roadhouse Restaurant right here in Greenville every Sunday night at 7 o'clock on most of these Pirate ISP Sports Network stations. 
Second down and 10. Pirates with the ball right at the 50-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Pinckney goes to work. Fires to the left side, and it's dropped by Dominique Lindsay at the 48-yard line. He's still on his pass intended for number 24, third down Dominic and Lindsay. Falls incomplete. Had some drops these tonight, Kim. Kendrick yeah, not a good series right here, especially have, after having the burning of timeout. You'd like to see him get it together and pick up a first down, down, but he can't keep dropping the football. Dwayne Harris comes in. He'll line up in a wideout. Pinkney goes to the sideline, now back in the huddle. Junior out of Fayetteville in Pine Forest High School. Third down at 10. Ball's right at the 50-yard line. Pirates with the opening possession as we start the second half. Two receivers right, two to the left. Out of the shotgun on third down and 10. Pinkney looks over the middle, still looks, fires to the sideline, and it's dropped by Jamar Bryant. That was a tough That's catch, but he could have made it. Jamar Ball Bryant. sailed high. Jamar Ball's had to put the hands up high Fourth to try and get it. He had gotten... Two yards past the first down marker, couldn't make the catch. Fourth down and ten, the drive stalls, and the Pirates will have to punt the ball away Matt from Dodge midfield. Punt Matt Dodge is in to punt it away for East Carolina. Patrick had a little bit more time Matt than he eight. thought. Uh, cornerback Kendrick Bernie Carolina. fell down on the play, had more time to make a better throw. So Matt Dodge is in to punt it away again right at the 50-yard line. The Appalachian State transfer gets it away. It's a high sailor, and Tate's going to let this one bounce out of bounds. And it will roll out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. So the Tar Heels are backed up deep at their own 8 yard line. line. So, Marty, good field position for East Carolina's defense. The Tar Heels backed up here at the 8. It is, and let's see how this defense responds coming out of the half. We talk a lot about halftime adjustments, but uh, we'll see what kind of adjustments the Tar Heels have made on offense. Marty on the sideline with our Verizon Wireless sideline, Mike. And we've got a timeout call. Another quick timeout here in this third quarter. 13-10 to go in the third quarter. We're tied. Pirates 17. Tar Heels 17. Back in Greenville before the fourth largest crowd in the history of Downey Pickford Stadium. 13-10 to go, third quarter, Pirates 17, Tar Heels 17. The Pirates have them right where they want them. They've got the Tar Heels backed up at their own eight-yard line to begin this series. Greg Hudson, defensive coordinator for the Pirates, really coaching those guys up down there on the sideline, along with Rick Smith and Rock Rogeman. Tar Heels come out offensively now. They break the huddle on the sideline, run out onto the field at the eight-yard line, and they get ready to start this series. First and ten, they're eight. T.J. Yates, a quarterback, was impressive in the first half. Fakes, looks up, in trouble, going down, Pirates sack him, back to the five-yard line, three-yard quarterback sack. Mark Robinson was there again, that's the second time he's been in there tonight. The senior, the veteran up front out of Longwood, Florida, getting the sack for the Pirates to the five-yard line, brings up second down at 13. Jeff Gates has not really been a drop-back passer today. Everything he's done has been either play action or rollouts, so it's taken a while. The Pirate defensive line is finally getting used to that, finally getting upfield, getting pressure on Ball at the five-yard line, second down, 13. This time Carolina comes out with two receivers wide left, one wide to the right, lone back set. Here is the handoff. It goes right side, and the ball carrier stop after about a one-yard game. The ball came loose. Carolina gets back on it. I think they blew the yeah, play dead at about stop. the six-yard line. Only about a yard. Fred Wilson and Pierre Bell making the tackle on Johnny White. And we'll go to two-yard pickup. Third down and 11 now coming up for the Tar Heels. Carolina really struggling right now, Jeff. They cannot allow them to get out right here. They got to pin them deep, keep them down here. Eight to three downs and out. Carolina three of eight on third down. Third down and 11 coming up. Backed up at their own seven yard line. Yates is back, stopping, throwing, a one hops a receiver. He trapped it at the 24-yard line. He's going to bring up fourth down and 11, and the Tar Heels are going to have to put it. Gates has not been on target, really, since about midway in the second quarter. Kevin, his throws have been low. He's been one hop in a lot of receivers. Yeah, we started getting pressure on him. That time, the pocket collapsed around him. He felt the pressure, tried to get rid of it too quickly. He's not stepping into his throws anymore. Dwayne Harris is back deep for the Pirates, standing at his own 50 or 49-yard line. Terrence Brown, Brown is in to punt the ball away. Brown did a good job of that first half punting the ball for North Carolina. He is the junior college transfer from Fresno City College in 
Fresno, California. Off the punt it out of the end zone. Pirates are coming after it, and he just got it away. Short punt. Harris gets it on the run at the 40-yard line. He's tackled at the 38, but great field position for the Pirates at the Tar Heel 38-yard line to start this drive. Brooks Foster made the tackle on Wayne Harris. First and 10 Pirates. At the 38-yard line, Marty, the Pirates with all the momentum here in this third quarter. Great job by that defense. One thing to pin them back as far as field position, but then another thing to keep them there. And, Kevin, you're right. You can almost see right now their quarterback is almost short-arming the ball. He's not following through, and that ball's coming up short. But there's so much pressure around his feet right now. Two receivers out wide right for the Pirates. Joan Crowell and T.J. Lee at the 38-yard line of the Tar Heels. Here's Pickney, rolling right after the fake on the handoff. In trouble, will throw back over the middle. Caught by Devon Drew. The big tight end catches the ball at the 30-yard line. Pick up of eight. Brings up second down and two. Mullins and Powell, the tackle for North Carolina. And the Pirates are on the move at the 30-yard line of North Carolina. Second down and two, East Carolina. I'm sure Patrick didn't expect to have to throw the football this much, but they got behind early. And boy, he really looks good. Just looks solid making those throws. Pinkney up to the line of scrimmage on a second down and two situation. He's able to keep the play alive with those quick feet that he has. Jason Halder, the tight end, in motion to the far sideline. The wind get transfer. Hand off right side. Dominic Lindsay has a hole. He's got the first down. Drives forward to about the 27-yard line. First down from Dominic Lindsay, who ran the ball well against the Hokies last week. Ten carries and 50 yards for the young man from Charlotte Independence High School. Miley Taylor making the tackle. And it's a first and ten for the Pirates right now. And look at the body language of the Tar Heels on defense, Kevin. They're kind of just standing around with their hands on their hips. They're sluggish. They can't seem to figure it out. Every time they get pressure on Pinckney, he finds an open receiver. First down and ten. Ball is at the 26-yard line of the Tar Heels. Tied at 17. Here's Pinckney up the middle, ran right into a stone wall at the 25-yard line, and he's driven and back five yards. Carolina. Wesley Flag hit him straight up and then drove it back. On the stop of the Tar Heels. I think that was actually Harris. Dwayne, Harris. Dwayne Harris. I'm sorry. Yeah, and the bad thing about Harris is that he's not attempted. I don't think he's attempted a pass this year, at least not in this ball game. And so they know when he gets back there, he's going to run it. They watch tape. They saw that at Virginia Tech last week. Dwayne Harris running the football and only picked up a couple of yards, a couple of tough ones at that. Second down and eight coming up. Pirates 17, Tar Heels 17. 9.54 to go third quarter. Two receivers out wide to the left, out of the shotgun. Pinkney's back in there, looking, throwing to the right side. Man open, catches the ball. It's Chris Johnson. He's walking into the end zone. Down the far sideline. Touchdown, Pirates. Nobody picked up Chris Johnson. He was wide open. Pirates have a 23-17 lead. Jeff, he actually went into high step mode at about the 10-yard line. I'm sure Coach Holtz will have something to say about that. But, boy, he was wide open. Pirates lead 23-17. 42 to go, third quarter. Extra point now coming up. Patrick Pinkney, 20 of 28. 304 yards, three TDs. Hartman is in now to boot the extra point. Balls down, kick is up, and the kick is good. East Carolina scored the last 17 points in this game, folks. It's Pirates 24, Tar Heels 17. Back to Greenville after this. Local timeout. Patrick Pickney is just doing a great job, Kevin, of keeping the play alive. You just can't put too much emphasis on a mobile quarterback, and he is able just to keep the play alive. And he doesn't panic. He waits until somebody comes open or he makes a play on his own running the ball. And he's just been terrific here in this third quarter. He's making very hard on uh, Brent Clay and those guys behind him because they're not going to be able to do anything that he can do. If he keeps coming out and making smart plays, this is going to be his position for a long time. Brandon Tate and Greg Little back deep. Well, the Pirates have right now all the momentum. This great crowd, 43,387. A homestanding Pirates leading 24 to 17. Back deep. Every day for Brandon Tate and Greg Little. Hartman kicks it off, and it's bouncing into the end zone, and Tate 
will have to take a knee nine yards Brandy deep into the Carolina ball come out from the 10 at its own 20 yard line. At their own 20 yard line. Well, Marty, all the momentum, and this is a game of momentum shifts. We've seen it both ways. Right now, the Pirates have all of it here at home. And on that last drive, let's give that offensive line some credit because Chris Johnson obviously was not even the first or second option. But Pinckney kept it alive, kept it alive, and then went to the backside. He was wide open. And you mentioned that Skip Holtz not being pleased with the gallop coming in from the 10K. Kevin, he met him at the 15. And had a miserable <laughs> talk. Tar Heels come to the line of scrimmage to the 20-yard line, first down and 10. T.J. Yates has gone all the way at quarterback, the freshman from Marietta, Georgia. Quick pitch, trying to turn the corner on the right side. It's a Tar Heel. Running back, and he's run over by Khalif Mitchell. Khalif Mitchell at 307 pounds showed great speed to get to the edge and making the tackle. You don't see a defensive lineman do that very often, Kevin. I tell you what, he had a convoy of offensive linemen going downfield. Looked like it was going to be a good play, and out of nowhere, like Superman, comes Khalif Mitchell. Wow. Khalif Mitchell, the former Tar Heel, now playing for the Pirates, makes a big play, tackle behind the line of scrimmage. On White back to the 18-yard line. It's second down and 12. Pirates are rushing four. Yates rolling right, looking downfield, throws back, caught at the 36-yard line for the first down. Tar Heel receiver catches the ball. Brooks Foster at a boiling springs. Van Estridge knocks it down, but it's too late. The Tar Heels pick up the first down at the 36-yard line, first and 10. North Carolina, 8.54 to go, third quarter. Pirates 24, Tar Heels 17. And they're on 37-yard line. Wide to the right goes Brandon Tate. One back set behind T.J. Yates, Scott Lenahan. Over the ball at center. Tate's in motion. Lanahan is back, looking, fires it out to the right side. It's caught out of the backfield. Here comes Johnny White, 40, 45, up to the 49-yard line. He's got another first Johnny down for the Tar Heels. A very talented Johnny White out of Asheville. The yeah, Aaron Bell stepped Robinson up the and made the tackle. Carolina. And the Tar Here's Heels move the play. chains. First and first 10, and North Carolina, Carolina their at their own 49-yard line. Yard line. They're starting to do the things that gave them the lead early on in the game. A little bit of, uh, you know, rolling out the quarterback. Dumping the ball off short, letting these receivers and running backs make plays. North Carolina opened at home last week in front of 58,500 in Chapel Hill. A lot of excitement for this football program with Butch Davis now as the head coach taking over for John Bunning after Coach Bunning was there for six years. Ball at the 49-yard line. Back to pass again. Here's Yates. He's going deep. Got a man out there. And the ball's caught at the five-yard line. In for the touchdown. In for the touchdown, Brandon Tate catches the ball as he wrestled the ball away from Jerry Hewitt. And again, Yates went back to throw that long ball with the air under it, and Tate ran under it, and he can really fly. And the Tar Heels are on the board with a touchdown, a big strike, 24-23. Barth is in now for the extra point to tie it. You believe that throw, Jeff? I mean, that's that's the David Garrard rainmaker right there. And Jeff Blake, who we had on at halftime a little before your time, Kevin, used to throw that kind of ball as well. That thing looked like it was at the top of the stadium when he let that thing go. Here's an extra point now coming up. A little bit high on the snap. And it's no good! Snap came back a little bit high, and the homer had a little trouble getting the ball down, and the Pirates remain on top. This extra point from Connor Barth, and he just won last week against James Madison. Oh, that's huge right there. Science, East Carolina 24, North Carolina 23, 7.56 to go in the third quarter. We're back after this network timeout. Connor Barth will kick it off. He has been a veteran in North Carolina as the kicker for a long, long time. He's a senior finally. He started kicking there as a freshman. Barth with the kick. He'll kick it deep this time. High end over end kick. And it is coming down, taken by Johnson at the 10. 15, 20, 25, 30. Got the same. 35, 40. Cuts it to the outside. 45, 50. Down the sideline. Chris Johnson finally pushed out of bounds at the 40. Right in front of the Pirate bench. The flags go. And we're going to have a personal foul against the Tar Heels as they tackle Chris Johnson out of bounds right in front of the Pirate bench. That's a great return that time by Chris Johnson. It's very tough on that defender because he's having to run so fast Chris to catch Johnson Chris Johnson. He can't pull up. That's why he made the lay out of bounds. Tell you what, that was a good restraint too, Marty, by the Pirate 
players on the sideline on that late hit. They just stayed away from that, you know, and I'm sure the coaches were telling them to stay away, but that was a late hit by the Tar Heels. Right out of their bench at that. Well, I'll tell you what, Kevin, he can really fly, can he? <laughs> and I, I can't believe they kicked it to him. I guess they felt like they got good coverage on him the time before, got him down to 15, so they felt pretty good about it. Kick it to him, and man, he just exploded. Well, you know, they've been kicking it to him all night. Jonathan Williams had the one return. They pretty much just got in. Kick it to him, and you, you give him enough touches, he's going to burn So the Pirates have great field position in the Carolina 31-yard line after the great return by Chris Johnson. Patrick Pickney out of the shotgun, pumping left, looking right, throwing short. It's caught at the 25-yard line, pickup of six yards on the play. Pickney's pass complete to Philip Henry. And it's almost like Kevin when you watch out there. The Pirates have got like seven guys going out for passes, and Victoria's only have like four or five guys to cover. There always seems to be a guy or two open somewhere. Well, the offensive line is doing such a good job of holding people away from Pink, and then Pink is using his feet to go through his progression. He's going to the first receiver, then the second receiver, and sometimes third or fourth receiver to find an open people. Second down and five. Pirates moving the ball at the 26-yard line of the Tar Heels. East Carolina 24, Carolina 23. We got flags. And we've got motion again. This time it may have been Devon Drew, the tight end, as the penalties just keep mounting up for the Legal Pirates. They had 12 penalties last week against Virginia Tech. Skip Holtz was pulling out his hair. And that's seven penalties tonight for the Pirates. Young offensive line still Five got a ways penalty. to go. Looked like, sorry, Jeff. Looked like Patrick was trying to audible right there, and, and uh, those offensive linemen couldn't wait. Pirates come to the line of scrimmage at the 31-yard line of Carolina. It's second down. Ten yards to go. Out of the shotgun. Pinckney fires quickly to the sideline. And Devon Drew, the tight end, catches the ball. Junior from Newburgh struggles over to the 28-yard line. No, I'm sorry. It was Philip Henry. Kendrick Williams on the stop for North Carolina. the 28-yard line. Kendrick Williams, the walk-on from Charlotte, stepping up, making the tackle for North Carolina. Third down. Seven yards to go. Third down and seven. Ball is at the 29-yard line. The legendary voice of the Carolina Tar Heels here tonight, Woody Durham, in his 37th season as the voice of the Tar Heels. Ball is at the 29-yard line. He's the dean of sportscasters in the state of North Carolina. Out of the shotgun. Here's Pickney looking, firing to the right side. Caught at the 20-yard line. Receiver got away. Got away again. It's Henry struggling down to about the 10-yard line. And all over the run. May be a face mask coming up here against Carolina. Great individual effort that time by Jamar Bryant, throwing guys off of him, keeping his feet, and making a nice play downfield. That's exactly the call. Personal foul call against Personal Carolina foul face mask. On the face mask. And the Pirates will be the beneficiaries of this Yardage that will be marked off here. At the five-yard line. And the Pirates will have it at the Carolina five. And North Ball Carolina now with five the replacements. Five they're going to get all the people in front. First and goal, Pirates at the Carolina five-yard line. They're like getting guys on the field and off the field as Carolina. They finally get their 11 out there. A little confused. They have to burn a timeout. So Carolina burns a timeout. A little confused getting their... Goal line defense in, 5.50 to go, third quarter. Pirates hanging on, but threatening again. East Carolina 24, North Carolina 23. Chris First and goal, Pirates with the ball at the five yard line. Pinkney turns, hand off left side. Chris Johnson the is hit. After about a Hills. half yard, that's about it. Trying to go line, Matt Butler and Josh Kaufman on that Second left side. Tari Hills are there. Jermaine Goddard, young man from right up the road. Robertsonville, Roanoke High School made the hit. Second down and goal now for the Pirates at the four yard line. Jamar Bryant goes out wide left. Steven Rogers out wide right. Chris Johnson, the lone setback, second and goal at the four. Pinkney under center. Gets a snap back, rolls to the left side, still rolls. There's the pitch, getting the pitch into the end zone. Touchdown, Pirates. It goes to Chris Johnson. Johnson 
takes it in from four yards out. And the Pirates have a 30 to 23 lead. 5.06 to go third quarter. And this offense, Kevin, since about midway in the second quarter, they've been unstoppable here. They've really been clicking on all cylinders. And you look up, they got 30 points. They scored seven last week. Chris Johnson's got every touchdown but one. Here's the extra point now coming up from Van Hartman. Ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. So the Pirates lead by eight points. Remember the Tar Heels missed an extra point earlier in this third quarter. 5.06 to go, third quarter. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 23. Back in Greenville after this network timeout. For more fun next Saturday, the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss, the old nemesis of the Pirates, will come in next Saturday. Should be another great crowd, great day for football in Greenville. We'll be on the air at 5 o'clock on the Pirate ISB Sports Network. Kick off time number eight. at 6 next Saturday. The longest running series of Pirate football against the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. So many great games over the years. It's a great rivalry. Another chapter of that great rivalry next Saturday. Make sure you're here at Donnie Ficklin Stadium, Bagwell Field for tickets. 1-800-DIAL-ECU. The conference opener against Southern Miss. Jeff Powell's Ball Club will be here next Saturday at 6 o'clock. Jeff, Jeff Patrick Pinkney now at 330 yards. I just looked at the record books. He's now 84 yards short of time. David Garrard's single game record is 414 yards. <laughs> it's amazing. Of course, he's had to get that big throw to Chris Johnson of 78 yards. And here's the kick off by Hartman, end over end, and it's coming down to Tate at the five yard line. 10, 15, 20, look out, 25, 30, and he's cut down from behind at the 32 yard line North by Carolina Leon Betts. Made by East Carolina's number one, Leon It'll be Betts. first and 10 for North Carolina at their own 32 yard line. And Kevin, what Pirates have to guard against now is that deep hole that TJ Yates throws so very, very well, and the Pirates have been burned oftentimes tonight with that deep ball. We've got the flag down on the field as well against East Carolina on flag the return. The well, let's see what this one's all about. It will be tacked on Offside. to the end of the run. Offside against the first, Pirates. First. And East they'll Carolina. move the ball up five yards and spot it down at the 38-yard line. Kevin, it just seems like the wind is out of the sails of the Tar Heels. Their defense, I mean, like I mentioned a moment ago, their defense just, they just seem totally perplexed out there. Yeah, they don't seem to know what's going on, run or pass, and that's good for the Pirates. But offensively, they had a nice drive last time through. So you got to tell these guys, keep the ball in front of you. Give up the short pass. Ball is at the 38-yard line. Tar Heels have it first and 10. Their own 38. Quick pitch coming to the right side and being hauled down from behind right at the 38-yard line. Khalif Mitchell. Does a great job jumping on the back of Anthony Elzey and brings him down at the 38-yard line. He is a man possessed. That that He should not be able to catch that play from behind like he is. They're not even counting him in the blocking scheme. They're running away from him, and each time he keeps running the same play down. Yeah, he does. He's a terrific athlete. T.J. Yates coming to the line of scrimmage, his own 48. 318 to go, third quarter. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 23. One receiver out wide left. There's a quick pitch coming to the right side. Here comes Johnny White. Ran into one of his own blockers, stayed on his feet, and then drives forward. Down to about the 45-yard line. He picks up seven. C.J. Wilson, sophomore out of Bell Haven, North Side High School. Seven yards on the carry. Had a sack and a tackle behind the line of scrimmage against the second Hokies last week. Makes the hit. Seven-yard pickup for Johnny White. Line. Brings up second down. And three yards to go. Kevin, I like the way this Johnny White runs. He's just a freshman. He's got some power when he runs. He does. Quickness and power gets upfield, hits the hole fast. Second down and three. T.J. Yates, all the way at quarterback, number 13 for North Carolina. Turns, fakes the handoff, now rolls left. Marcus Hans is after him, can't catch him. And there's a wide open receiver, and he dropped the ball at the 20-yard line. Jerry Hewitt let his man get behind him. And the ball was dropped by Barham on the far sideline for North Carolina. If he hangs on, he's got six. The cardinal rule of a defensive back, you never come underneath unless you're sure you can get a hand on the ball. Jared Hewitt made a big mistake right there, and thank goodness the receiver dropped the ball. Third down and two. <laughs> it's an adventure every time they throw deep against the Pirates secondary. Wide left goes Tate. He is so dangerous. Brooks Foster's out there as well. He's in the slot. Third down and two. Tar Heels, four of ten on third down. Here's Yates, play action, and 
throws the ball on the ground at the 50-yard line. Now he didn't see anybody downfield, and he just threw the ball right into the ground. And it will bring up fourth down and two yards to go now for the Tar Heels. Linville Joseph was putting the pressure on, and he is a monster. He's 6'6", 344 pounds, and he's a true freshman. Terrence Brown in the I mean, the Pirates Carolina. up front. I mean, they look big time on that Pirates. defensive line, don't they, Kim? They look great. They're playing fast. And uh, T.J. Yates was smart right there. He threw the ball right at the feet of Johnny White. They were set up a screen pass that didn't work, but that's why it wasn't intentional ground. Here is Brown, five punts, a 39-yard average in this one. And the Fresno City College punter punts this one down to the 10-yard line. Back Wayne Harris calls by the Pirates, Dwayne Harris. And takes it at, at the 10-yard line. Yard line. Back the Pirates will take at over the first 10-yard line. First down at 10, East Carolina at its own 10. 2-11 to go. Pirates 31, North Carolina 23. And that missed extra point could loom large in this game tonight. Kevin, it would force Carolina, if they score a touchdown, to go for two on their conversion attempt, I would think, if they score again. Which would be one of the most stressful two-point conversions in, ever in this stadium. So let's hope it didn't come to that. At the 11-yard line, Pirates come out, first down at 10. They'll keep it on the ground. And the handoff goes to the Dominic first Lindsay on the carry for Dominic the Pirates. Lindsay. It's about four to the 14-yard line. Wesley Flagg on the stop Wesley North Flagg Carolina. Came up and made made four yards tackle. on the play. Second down and six, ball at the 15. Four-yard pickup for Dominic Lindsay. He's the power back for the Pirates, about 210 pounds out of Charlotte Independence. Missed seven games last year, out with that knee injury. Had a really good game. Last week against the Hokies, ran for five yards a pop. Ten carries, 50 yards against Virginia Tech. Second down and six. Ball is at the 15-yard line in the eye. Two receivers are out wide to the right side. Pinkney looking, firing, and it is caught on the far sideline. Receiver going After down at about the 19-yard line. Stephen Rogers, the catch on the far sideline. Kendrick side Williams on the stop for the Tar Heels. And five on the play. Tar Heels came Third in plus one. one as far as their turnover margin is concerned. Coming into this game, the Pirates plus two. East Carolina got three turnovers last week at Virginia Tech and only turned it over one time. Oftentimes, you do that, you win the game, but came out of Blacksburg with a 17-7 loss to the ninth-ranked Hokies. Third down and one now coming up for East Carolina. They're at their own 19-yard line. Big play here. Pinckney with a handoff to the right side. Dominic Lindsay runs oh, into an absolute stone wall of Tar Heels, and they push him back on that left side. And Ketwan Balmer was there leading the way. He's had a big game tonight from his defensive tackle spot. And the young man from Havelock, Bruce Carter, was Lost right behind. Fourth down, about three yards to go for the Pirates. And here comes Matt Dodge in to punt it away for East Carolina. It's times like that Matt when you Dodge really like to have a, an established fullback or put the tight end back there to really Brandon bowl forward. Tate for Tate's back Carolina. deep, the ever-dangerous Brandon Tate back deep at his own 36-yard line. Dodge tonight, five punts, a 39.2-yard average. That's pretty good because he has to overcome a 12-yard effort in that first half. He puts this one away. It's returnable. Tate catches the ball on the run at the 44, to the 45, to the 50 to midfield. Got a block on the perimeter. Look out. 40, 35, 30, down the sideline. Brandon Tate is going to take it to the house. Touchdown, North Carolina on the punt Brandon return Tate by Brandon Tate. Touchdown for North Carolina. 57 yards on the punt return. Brandon Tate takes it to the house at the end of the third quarter. And it's 31-29. The Tar Heels are right back in it on the Brandon Tate punt return for the TD. You got to blame that one on the punter. It was a low, hard punt. He outkicked his coverage, and guys weren't downfield getting set up. That's really tough right there. You can't allow special teams to get them back in the game when their offense was really struggling. Brandon Tate took that ball to the middle of the field, and then he broke it outside. He got one block on the perimeter, and that is all he needed. It was clear sailing once he got to the 30-yard line, and they weren't going to catch him down the sideline. Well, just as I was saying, 31-29. Pirates are up by two points, and Kevin, they're going to go for the two-point conversion. T.J. Yates comes in, going for two, and this is the extra point. They'll have to go for two. They call a timeout. Timeout called North Carolina. And North Carolina calls the timeout. There's no time on the clock. And North Carolina calling the timeout to come back and try and run that play for the two-point 
conversion. Marty, the hiring coaches can't be happy. Anytime you get a punt returned against you for a touchdown, that drives coaches nuts. Yeah, I think you're right. You guys caught it right. I mean, you can see the ball, the punt never really turned over. And he caught it on the fly, and once he got to the outside, he was gone, beating the coverage. But guys, hey, look at this right now. This is a big timeout that North Carolina had to burn. They now only have one timeout left. And, you know, you hate to do that. You hate to have to call a timeout to set up your two-point conversion, see if that comes back to it. This is going to be a very interesting fourth quarter, guys. If nothing else, offensively for East Carolina, they've kept this North Carolina defense on the field for a lot of the second quarter, most of the third quarter. Let's see if they can wear this Carolina defense down as we move deep into the fourth. Party on the sideline with our Verizon Wireless sideline mic. Get the latest scores, stats, and game highlights with ESPN MVP exclusively from Verizon Wireless, the official wireless provider of the ECU Pirates. Big play call here. Tar Heels go for two. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 29. This will be the final play of the third quarter. Tar Heels come up, everybody in tight, and now Yates drops back into the shotgun and sends four receivers to the right side, one to the left. Yates looking to the right side. Rolls, looking, looking, throwing. Caught in the end zone! Caught in the end zone! A two-point conversion is good. Rome catches the ball, and the Tar Heels get that two points back. It was Elsie catching the ball in the end zone. We are tied at the end of three quarters. So the Tar Heels get the point back. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. Hold on to whatever you've got. We're coming back with a fourth quarter after this local timeout. Chris Johnson back deep in his own goal line. Connor Barth with the kick. High kick coming up short. Jonathan Williams catches at the 15 to the 20. Trying to go wide. Cuts inside. 25, 30. Great cut to the 40-yard line. Jonathan Williams to the 40-yard line. Jonathan Williams to the 30. Down to the 25. Down to the 22-yard line. Flag also down on the field. Jonathan Williams, the true freshman from Rose High School. Right here in Greenville. Took it up the middle and then cut it to the outside. We've also got a flag down at the 28-yard line. Now tack the penalty on the Tar Heels on at the end of this run. And we see the very talented Jonathan Williams. He's so talented, Kevin, they've taken the red shirt off of him. And he comes up with a big, big return. The up man. On that kickoff oh, return, a huge run for Williams. I, I wasn't going to mention Rose High School, but since you did, <laughs> boy, we put out a lot of talent. Yeah, the, the alma mater coming through. <laughs> what a run back by Jonathan Williams. Puts the Pirates in the red zone. They're at the 17-yard line of North Carolina. First and 10 Pirates in the Carolina 17. Pinkney back, play action, rolls to the left, looks downfield, throws, and throws it away. To the sideline, tried to get it to Devon Drew. He's been a big part of the offense tonight. The tight end out of Newby brings up second down and 10 for the 17. Highly Taylor has been in there all night for Carolina. He was putting the heat on Patrick Pickney. 
Looking at an idea and following this next play, 14.43 to go in the ball game. Tied at 31, the Pirates and the Tar Heels. Only the second time North Carolina has been in Greenville. In this series, it started way back. Second down and 10. Three receivers out to the right side. Here's Pinkney, takes the handoff, keeps it himself, turns it up inside, gets to the 15. A couple of yards, and that's it. Let's get a station Patrick break. Patrick Pinkney on the quarterback UB. keeper. University Book Exchange, Uptown and Greenville are on the web. At PirateWare.com. They're in the heart of Uptown Gain Greenville. Two across on the play. The Chico's 10 Third seconds down down Station ID on the Pirate ISP Sports Network. You're watching ECU TV. Third down and eight. Pirates come to the line of scrimmage at the Carolina 15 yard line. 31, 31, 14 minutes to play. Out of the shotgun. Pinkney has time. Rolls right. Now getting pressure. Dumps it off. Caught by Johnson at the 15. Chris tries to dodge Chris a Tar Heel and can't. He goes down right at the 15 yard line. One. Pascal and Brown with a tackle for Butch Davis's North Tar Heels Carolina. right at the 15 yard line. Brings up fourth down for the Pirates and, and a fourth and seven situation and we will see Ben Hartman come in and attempt the field goal for East Carolina. He's one for two tonight. Ben Hartman in his ben first Hartman full year as the kicker the for the goal. Pirates. Missed from 30, made from 33. Sloan is in to hold, Rainers in to snap. They'll spot this one down at the 22 yard line near hash mark. There's a spot, ball down from 32 yards up. It hit the upright! It hit the no, left it, upright it the upright and, and no bounces good. off. No, no good. Pirates 31. Tar Heels 31. 13 12 to go. That ball hit the upright. Oh my goodness. Marty, I think the team that makes the least amount of mistakes is going to win this one down the stretch here in this fourth quarter. The Pirates giving up that touchdown on the punt return. And now Ed Hartman misses his second field goal of the night. Sometimes those things come back to haunt you. Yeah, we talked about special teams being so important. That's right. Right now, the Pirates are stubbing their foot a little bit on special teams. Huge time now for this defense because you can see the momentum is shifted completely completely over to the other sideline. The Pirates need to force a three and out. Well, Kevin, it's tough when you miss these field goals from the range in which Ben is missing them here tonight. 30 and from 32, I mean, those are very makeable field goals that you really just have to make. Yeah, you consider those chip shots. And, you know, last year, Ben Hartman went head to head with Robert Lee and actually beat him out at one point and kicked him in three or four ball games. So you know he's got the experience in making big kicks. And I, I don't know what's going on tonight, but you especially have to convert after a long run back like that from Jonathan Wee. Yeah, Ben was three of five last year when he got his feet wet as the Pirate kicker. And now here tonight he struggled, did not have an attempt at Virginia Tech and Blacksburg, but tonight he's just one for three. And we're tied at 31. It's such a big play in this game where the Tar Heels converted on that two-point opportunity after missing an extra point earlier in the half, and that's gotten them right back on the board in a tie score at 31-31. So now it's up to the Pirate defense. They've been terrific against the run. They've had problems against the pass tonight, especially in the secondary. T.J. Yates all the way at quarterback. Brings the Tar Heels to the line of scrimmage, the 20-yard line. He's back to pass, rolling out. Throwing the ball over the middle, and it's caught at the 25-yard line to the 30-yard line. The receiver is still on his feet. It's a keen pick, and he turns back into the middle of the field, and finally the Pirates get him on the ground. Chris Maddox and Zach Slate finally get him on the ground. He ran a long way to pick up about eight yards, and it brings up second down and two. Had the first down and, and kept going and uh, ended up running backwards and losing. Second down and two. Here, Bell hobbling off to the sideline for the Pirates. The junior out of Vanceboro. Second down and two now coming up. Tar Heels have three receivers out wide, right, one to the left. Second down, two. They'll keep it on the ground. They've got the first down. Quickly bursting into the secondary across the 40 to Number about six, the 43 yard Elzey line is Anthony Elsey. He's the red shirt freshman out of Warren, Ohio in John Kennedy High School, where he rushed for over 2,000 yards as a senior. Chris Maddox 
Yeah, was there to make the, the hit for the Pirates. First and and the Tar Heels moving the ball on the ground now. Line. First and 10, North Carolina at its own 42-yard line. Wide to the right goes Brooks Foster. Elsie set behind. The freshman quarterback, T.J. Yates out of Marietta, Georgia. Foster's down in motion. Yates is back to throw again. Flares it out of the backfield. It's caught by Elsie at the 40 to the 45. He's up to the 48-yard line. Pirates get him here on the near sideline at the 48. Jarek Hewitt on the Six-yard pickup brings up second down and four. Jarek Hewitt stepped up. Made the six tackle. yards on the reception. Nice job by Mark Robinson. Really stretching that play out. He almost ran it down and made it made it stop for a short game. Couldn't quite get there, but a nice effort by the defensive line. Mark Robinson's played a good game up front for the Pirates tonight. Number 96, senior out of Longwood, Florida. Ball is at the 48-yard line. Second down, four yards to go. Receiver out wide right, three receivers to the left. Now Quinn, the big tight end, shifts from the left to the right side of the formation on second down and four. And a motion to the right side. Hand off, they're going to give it to LZ again. He runs into a stone wall at the 50, and, and he goes LZ down the there carry. two yards short of the first down. Brings up third down and two. Jeremy, Jeremy Campbell's on the stop for the Pirates. Stepped up and made the hit. For East Carolina brings up third down third and two. Down one. And Marty Fuhr, the Pirates need to stop right here. Yeah, they really do. They need to surge up front. Look for Carolina to try to bounce it outside. Carolina quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Third down, a long one to the left side. They've got the first down. It's Ilzy again Anthony going behind Kyle Jolly and Aaron Stahl. The left side of that Carolina line. He picks up the first Pirates. down before Maddox gets him for the Pirates. First and 10, Carolina at the Pirate 44 yard line. Marty was absolutely right there, right there. They would have had him piled up inside. Elsie makes a great move, bounces it outside, picks up the extra yardage. They're giving the ball to Elsie now, the redshirt freshman out of Warren, Ohio. They've got a young stable of running backs at Carolina. We've seen Johnny White, Anthony Elsie, and Richie Rich. First down and 10, ball is at the 44-yard line. Carolina on the move, Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. Hand off right side, Elsie, this time is hit. Knocked backwards, he's going down, tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Linville Joseph was there. Chris Maddox also Chris helped Maddox out. Loss on the play of about the four yards. And it will Loss bring up second yards. down and 14 yards second to go now for Carolina. Clock moves on, becoming a factor. 10.02 to play in the ballgame. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. What a great game it's been in Greenville tonight. Tied at halftime at 17. And now this thing very much up for grabs with 9.48 to go as the Tar Heels come to the line of scrimmage. Receivers left and right, one back set. Here's Yates. He'll turn, he'll hand off. And no, Yates gets away, he kept the ball. Now he throws it. It's caught out of the backfield by Johnny White. And he struggles to the Pirates sideline and is wrestled down at the 36 yard line. Good ball faking by the quarterback that time, T.J. Yates. He kept the ball and dumped it off to Johnny White, who gets good yardage out of the backfield with a pass. Ross and Mitchell making the tackle for the Pirates. Looked like the defensive lineman there Third went for the two. swipe of the ball, and Yates happened to spin out of it right when he went for the swipe, and he couldn't quite make the tackle. I can't hear you. Third down and two coming up. Kevin, they've not thrown the deep ball for a while. That has to be a concern here. Third down and two. Ball is at the 36-yard line. Receivers left and right. Brooks Foster's in motion. Gates fires. The ball is caught at the 30-yard. Ball's up in the air. It's loose on the turf. Scrambled for. Still being scrambled for at the bottom of the pile. No official indication yet. The Pirates say they have the football. They're still digging for it at the bottom of the pile. Jerry That's Hewitt the knocked it loose. And the Pirates have the, the football. East Carolina has the ball. And guess who's got it? The big man, number 98, Khalif Mitchell. The former Tar Heel gets the fumble recovery for the Pirates. Jerry Hewitt that time was not able to make the play on the catch for the first down, but hung in there, was ready to make the tackle, and ripped it out. Nice play that time by Jerry Hewitt. Big time turnover, and the Pirates get the ball. 9.25 to go. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. East Carolina gets the ball back in a huge turnover at their own 29 yard line. Two receivers out wide left. Steven Rogers out wide to the right side. Pinkney back, flares it out left side. Man open, catches the ball. 35 40, breaks the tackle, still drives forward, gets to the 50 yard line. Chris 
Jackson with the catch out of the backfield. Takes it to midfield. Kendrick Birdie making the tackle. 21 yards on the dump off to Chris Johnson. Coming out of the backfield. And the Pirates have a first down. Not sure what Chris Johnson was going through last year. But this is not the same player. He is really playing well so far in 2007. Well, Chris, is a senior. His dream is to play in the NFL. And he certainly has the speed to do that. He's looking for a big senior campaign. Ball at the 49-yard line of the Tar Heels. First down and 10. Chris Johnson, four catches tonight, 126 yards. And we've got movement again at the line of scrimmage. J.R. Kramer, who's the backup tight end, the transfer from Illinois, jumps for the Pirates. East Carolina continues to come up with penalties in this game. 12 last week against Virginia Tech and nine tonight. 8.55 to play. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. East Carolina following the penalty. Here they are again, first and 15, back at their own 46-yard line. Two receivers go out wide right. Steven Rogers, now Philip Henry in motion to the left side. Here's Pinkman. Look out, backside pressure. He gets it away. It's caught at the 50-yard line, and the receiver struggles forward and gets to about the 26-yard line. Jamar Bryant, if he gets one more step, Kevin, he's down the sideline, gets back to the 46-yard line of Carolina. Oh, yeah, he three almost yards. split the receivers right there, tried to bust through eight. and couldn't quite make it. Nice play that Second time by Patrick Pinky, staying under, under control as the defensive line was bearing down on him. Second down and seven out for the Pirates. 8.05 to play. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. Three receivers out wide to the right, one out wide left. Out of the shotgun, Pinkney gets the snap. Pinkney with a run, quarterback draw, and he stood up, he fights forward. They can't get him on the ground, and finally the whistle blow after about three Tar Heels had him corralled at the 41-yard line. Highly dead. Darrell Mapp, Kentwan Balmer, they were all there for UNC. Made him six Big third down right here, Jeff. Third down and one. Third and one coming up. Clock is moving on. Seven and a half minutes to go. Pirates have a couple of timeouts on the board. Ball is at the 40-yard line. Third down and one coming up. Pinckney taking his time. Brings him out in the I formation. Patrick turns, handoff, it goes to Chris Johnson, lowers that hit here, he's got the first down. Went behind the veteran left side of the line. Josh Kaufman, the senior left tackle, and Matt Butler, the senior left guard. And Chris gets the first down. Good to see Chris pick up those tough first downs on short yardage situations. Can't say much enough about Chris Johnson right now. Last year he would have tried to bounce that outside. Who knows if he'd have made it. That time he saw the crease and he hit it hard. First down and 10, Pirates. 6.50 to play in the ball game. They're on the move following the turnover at the Carolina 38-yard line. Patrick Pinkney under center. He's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He's got an audible, and then the Pirates run out of time. The lay a game against the Pirates. <laughs> We're seeing some young mistakes out there, Kevin. And a lot of these guys just having to grow Five up, and that is the 10th penalty, penalty against the Pirates tonight. Well, the Carolina did a great job right there. Coach Pagano doing a good job of switching up on defense. Patrick saw something he didn't like, wanted an audible, didn't have enough time. Chuck Pagano, the defensive coordinator at Carolina, was at East Carolina under two different staffs, under Bill Lewis and also under Steve Logan. Coach Pags, first and 15. Here's Pinckney. Fakes the handoff, rolls right, stops, looks over the middle, throw, incomplete. There's a flag down, pass interference. Coming up on Kendrick Williams at the 20-yard line on Steven Rogers. And that was a no-brainer right here on the sideline, Kevin. And that was a senior. Kendrick Williams is a senior. That, he just panicked. You cannot panic when you're in good shape. Just hang back and come up when the ball comes up. He just out and out tackled Steven Rogers right there. Three flags went down, interference call against the Tar Heels. And with 6.16 to go, Pirates are on the move. We're tied at 31. Marty, that turnover really changed things, didn't it? It was a huge defensive play on, and on that interference call. You could see the defender lost sight of where the football was, and all of a sudden he's just reading the receiver. And guys, I know there's a lot of time left, but remember, special teams has let them down here in the red zone. Let's see how the offense, see how that might change play calling. 
Ball is at the 28-yard line, first and 10. Pirates of the Carolina 28. Pinckney turns, hands off. Dominic Lindsay, strong run down to the 21-yard line. Had a couple of Tar Heels on his back. And he takes him down to the 21, a gain of seven. Good, strong run by Dominic Lindsay. Wesley Flagg, Darrell Mapp making the tackle Wesley for North Carolina. Carolina. You want to be somewhat conservative right here because you've got a young quarterback. You don't want to turn the ball over. Yards. And plus, you want to keep the clock moving. But you also got to be three. thinking touchdown the way Ben Hartman's been kicking. Two receivers go out wide to the right side. Second down and three. Ball is at the 21-yard line. Hand off, left side, and Dominic Lindsay looks up and he's crushed. Marvin Dominic Austin Lindsay was there. The Remember Pirates. that name? He's going to be a great player at Carolina. Marvin he's a true freshman the out of Washington, D.C. As Kevin mentioned, there were some scouting services said he was the best defensive lineman in high school football last year at a Baloo High School in D.C. He made a big five. play there, and it's third down and five now coming up for the Pirates. He's huge, absolutely huge. And he's a true freshman. Third down. Five yards to go for the Pirates at the 23-yard line of Carolina. Clock is moving. 5.03 to go. Pirates 31. Tar Heels 31. Man of motion to this side. Pinky will operate out of the shotgun. Third down and five. Patrick looking throws over the middle. It's caught by Johnson. He broke a tackle inside the 15. Down to the 14-yard line. First down, Pirates. Chris Johnson coming out of the backfield, making the catch. Moves the chains, keeps the drive alive. First and 10, Pirates at the Carolina 14-yard line. Got to move the chains, got to keep the clock rolling. And we got to remember, Carolina always got, only has one timeout left. So the more clock we run, the better. Pirates coming to the line of scrimmage. First down and 10, East Carolina at the North Carolina 14-yard line. Two receivers out wide right. Here's Pinckney, handoff. Chris Johnson tries to get around the corner and can't off that far side. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Good defense that time by Carolina. Highly Tremaine Taylor was there again. Top. And so was Tremaine Goodard, the young man from Robertsonville in Roanoke High School. 4.28 to go. Stops the clock on the run to the far sideline. Tied at 31. We were tied at halftime. 17-17. Pirates battled back in that second quarter they got two late scores in the second quarter they were down 17 to 7 tied it at halftime at 17 17. chris johnson's in motion to the left side pinkney going that way look sees all kinds of blue shirts and carolina blows that one up in the pirate backfield loss on the play of about four yards Kent Wood Bomber was there, made the tackle for North Carolina. Kent one Bomber on the stop for the Tar Heels. Clock moves with 4.08 to go. Second down and 10 coming up for the Pirates. East Carolina 31, third North down, Carolina 13. 31. Third down, correction third down. And 14 yards coming up for the Pirates with the ball resting at about the 17 yard line. Out of the eye formation. Rolling right, Pinkney looks, throws, and it is caught by Lindsay. He had it, juggled it, got it back, That's and then he's tackled at the 20 yard line. Dominic Lindsay. So he went backwards six yards, bobbling the football. Well, the Wilson and Mapp making the tackle for Carolina, and here comes Hartman again. He's one for three tonight. The Pirates will have to attempt a field goal to put him ahead, Kevin. Got to earn a scholarship check right here, Jeff. He's missed two big ones. Now he's got to hit a big one. This one just a little farther back. He'll spot it down at the 27. It's a 37-yard attempt near hash mark for Ben Hartman. There's a snap ball down. The kick is up from 37. And the kick is no good. He missed it again. Hartman goes wide right. He's missed three field goals tonight. And we stay tied with 3-0-3 to go. Pirates 31, Carolina 31. He's missed from 30, he's missed from 33, he's missed from 37. Carolina will have the ball when we come back. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. We're back after this network timeout. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31, 3-0-3 to go, and the Tar Heels come out with a football offensively at their own 20-yard line. First and 10, North Carolina in its own 20, the Pirates get the turnover, move the ball down the field, and Hartman misses from 37. 
So now the Tar Heels have a chance to win it on their final possession. Yates in the pocket, looks, flares it out, it's caught. Wide open, 25, 30, 35 to the 36-yard line is Johnny White coming out of the backfield to the 36-yard line. Chris Maddox making the tackle for East Carolina. And Marty, what's it like down there on that sideline after that finish? Oh, it's almost like a kick in the gut right there. You can see just the frustration. The defense came up big, gave another opportunity for special teams. Kevin, you can see you almost try to aim it instead of just kicking the football. And you can't do that. Marty on the sideline with our Verizon Wireless sideline. Mike, here's a handoff, breaking through. Johnny White across the 50, across the 45. He's down to the 41-yard line of the Pirates. Johnny White, the freshman out of Asheville. Chris Maddox, Travis Williams stepped up, making the tackle for East Carolina. And the ball is at the Pirate 41-yard line. First and 10 Tar Heels, 2.39 to go in the game. Clock starts, tied at 31. Receiver left and a receiver right. Here's Yates. They'll keep it on the ground. Up the middle, Johnny White across the 35. The down carry. to the 34-yard line. And now they're getting in Connor Barth territory to kick a field goal to win it. Marcus Hands, on Marcus the Hands Chris Maddox. Gain of seven on the play. Making the hit. Gain Second of seven on the play. Connor Barth has range up to 54 yards. He kicked a 54-yarder earlier in his career against NC State. We're tied at 31. Ball is at the Pirate 34. It's second down and three Tar Heels. Yates sends Quinn to the left side. White in motion. Fumbles the snap. Ball's loose. And I think Yates got back on the ball. Ball popped out again loose. And let's see if they blew the play dead or not. I think they did. And I think Yates got back on the ball. 13, TJ Yates. I believe that's going to be the call it is. Wow, huge lump in the throat of our Carolina people right there. Got to get that snap. 1.31 to go. Clock continues to roll. Third down coming up for the Tar Heels. Third down and four. The bell tolls for the Pirate defense. Pirates have a couple of timeouts left. Carolina has a timeout on the board. And goes wide right. Third down and four. Big play here at the Pirate 35-yard line. Hand off left side. Nothing. Right at the line of scrimmage, the Pirates are there, and they bottle a plate right at the 35-yard line. No gain on the play. Boy, Jeff, this is going to make for a very long field goal. They decided to kick it right here. Fourth down and four coming up. It would be 52 yards on the field goal attempt. We're inside a minute now with 55 seconds to go. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. We're going to keep it right here. And Marty, really big time decision time here for Butch Davis. In his first year as the head coach of the Tar Heels, is he going to go for it on fourth down and four, or will he send Connor Barth in for a 52-yard field goal attempt? It looks like Barth is getting and loosened up on the sideline. Now, I would think, guys, that third down and four University. kind of set the hand that he was going to send Barth out here. If anything else, he was very conservative to make sure that they weren't going to turn the football off. You know, they have all the confidence in the world in Barth. He's been there before. He's improved it on before. And I think, you know, he's just going to give him an opportunity to win the game for you. And he's been on a run, Kevin. He's made 13 in a row. And he picked one earlier in this game. He put the Tar Heels in front with a 39-yard field goal. Just a minute six into the game tonight. And that made it 13 in a row for Connor Barn. In his career, he's 37 of 51. And as I just mentioned earlier in his career, he hit one from 54 yards out against NC State. And this one will be right about 52. So this is well within his range. It would truly make you sick to your stomach to see him make a 52-yarder after we've missed three in the 30s. But wow, he's been a clutch kicker, so we'll see what happens. He's a 6'1", 190-pound senior out of Wilmington. A little bit of a free spirit, as a lot of kickers are. Loves the beach, loves to surf. Kind of got that surfer look with the long hair. And he's also in the t-shirt business. He's got a little business going on inside where he's Manufacturing shirts. Now the Pirates would like to get to him right now and rip that shirt off of him if they can get to him. Ball is at the 35-yard line. And Connor Barth is in. That's exactly where they're going to spot it, right at the 42. 
Got to watch the football here. Right at the 42-yard line, it'll be a 52-yard field goal for Connor Barth. They'll put the Tar Heels in the lead with 55 seconds to go. There's the snap, and they fumble. The owner fumbles the snap. He's tackled at the 48-yard line. like a good snap and it's easy to say but guys remember they had to go for the two-point field goal because they had problems with the snap on an extra point so the pirates get the ball back their own 47 yard line only 51 seconds to go back to pass pinkney looks throws over the middle diving catch made at the 33 yard line philip henry makes the catch at the 33 yard line they've got to stop the clock to move the chain 46 seconds to go pirates 31 34-yard line of the Tar Heels. They start the clock. Pinckney in the shotgun. High snap. Looks over the middle. Has time. Throws. Caught again. Dwayne Harris. The catch at the 20-yard line. Oh, my goodness. What has Ben Hartman thinking now? He's, he's, he's got to be sick right now. He's got to be sick. He's thinking this offense had better get in the end zone so I don't have to win it. He is praying for a touchdown right now. 28 seconds to go. They start the clock. Pirates hurry up to the line of scrimmage, the 21 yard line. Tied at 31. Clock moving, 18 seconds to go. Long snap. Pinckney looking, looking, throwing, looking right. Now looking downfield, gonna throw the ball, and it is caught at the 10 yard line. Was he inbounds? He was. Steven Rogers makes the catch at the 10 yard line. That's close right there. I, I don't know if he was inbounds or not. They're giving it to him. Let's hope they don't have time to challenge him. Stop the clock on the out-of-bounds pass to the near sideline with eight seconds to go. Ball is at the 10-yard line. Pinckney, the end of the huddle now comes back out onto the field. They're going to review the play. The officials are coming to the sideline on the review. That's not what you wanted to see because it, it didn't look like from up here he was in bounds. Well, Marty was down on the sideline with our Verizon Wireless sideline Mike. Marty, what did it look like to you? Guys, I couldn't tell because I was screened, but this is an inter interesting decision. You know, if your kicker's doing it, you're not even thinking about going forward here as far as the end zone. But if they bring the offense out on the field, you have to make sure you don't take the sack, you don't make the interception, and see if you can give him that one final shot at redemption. He's missed three times tonight, Kevin. As you know, he's one for four in... <laughs> warming up on the sideline one more time. He could redeem himself with a field goal in the closing seconds. And how about the Pirates moving this ball right down the field. Carolina back in their prevent. So the Pirates are able to complete a lot of passes in the middle of the field. The only thing I can say, Jeff, is if, if this is a complete pass, they're in a situation now where it's almost an extra point. They just need to make one run and play to the middle of the field because the three times that he's missed have been on either hashes. So get the ball in the middle of the field, let him try a field goal, or an extra point, basically. If you can't make that, you know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> There's one timeout on the board for the Pirates. Well, a lot of nerves out there. A couple of young football teams with some young players. And as we said earlier in the broadcast, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes, especially coming down the stretch, is going to win this football game. They're lining up. It must have been a complete pass. Okay. Guys, the officials are still discussing, and it's a very long discussion, which means they may be looking for the spot of the ball if they bring it back. It's one of those things, the longer you review, the worse it is for the team that's hoping to get the claw that stands on the field. But I think you're right, Kevin. I think right now, if nothing else, they're going to put the ball in the middle of the field to try to make it almost an extra point. Here's Here we the go. Goal. After review, the ruling on the, ruling field, on the field has field changed. changed. The ball was not the ball was so the review turned over and the Pirates don't get the reception and the ball comes back to the 21-yard line and ACC officiating crew here tonight 
The referee, Steve Barth, with the call on the sideline. You can't afford to turn it over, Jeff. I mean, as bad as we've looked on the kicking game, you got to just run it, keep it in the middle of the field, call timeout, and kick it again. Yep, get that timeout called. They've got the ball now right at uh, the middle of the field. There's only eight seconds to go, so they got to run this play and then get that timeout called quick. And here's Pinkney. He goes to the right side, and he takes a knee, and they get the timeout called. The clock is still moving on here, and they let the time go down to two seconds. I thought they were going to stop the clock with about five seconds to go, but they finally got it stopped timeout. with two seconds to go. And here is Ben Hartman again. And they're going to ice him, Jeff. So after we come back from this timeout, Carolina's going to call a timeout. So he's going to have all the time in the world to think about this kick. We're going to keep it here. Marty White can be going through this young man's mind. He's missed three field goals tonight from 30, 33, and 37. Well, look at it. If you could see the big screen a moment again, Coach Holtz and all his teammates around him patting him on the head. Of course, let's say worst case scenario, if it doesn't go through, you're going to get overtime. It's almost less pressure in this situation than if. Yeah, Marty, you're right. That's a good point, Kevin, because if it's a two point game where he has to come in and make the field goal to win the game, then there's a Incredible pressure on the young man, but if he does miss, we're looking at overtime, and of course, nobody wants to see that. It's a Pirate fan here in this one, and Ben Hartman, who's missed three to nine, he's one for four. Now in his career at East Carolina, he's only four out of nine. He was three of five last year. He's the young man from Winston-Salem, North Davidson High School. Ben Hartman, and this Carolina. is going to be a little farther back again. Rainer is in the snap. Sloan is in the hold, and the Tar Heels call the timeout to ice him with two seconds to go. And this is going to be right at a 40-yard field goal go attempt. It's all in his head at this point. I mean, he's missed left. He's missed right. He's, he's hit the upright. <laughs> he's done it all the time. I mean. And, Kevin, uh, Marty, you made a good point on the sideline when uh, we'll get to Marty in a moment when Marty said on that last attempt, Kevin, it looked like he was really trying to aim the ball, much like a pitcher who's having trouble throwing the ball for strikes in the strike zone, then just tries to aim the ball. And I think that's what Ben did on that last kick. He just tried to aim it. And it hit, went wide on the right side. And he's conversing with Skip Holtz on the field. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I think. But the thing about the aiming is that we're going left, they're going right from different hashes. Now he's not up in the middle of the field. He can just kick through it and not worry about which way it goes, just kick through the ball. Well, let's see if he can do it. Pirates 31, Tar Heels 31. People ask me all week, what do you think about the game? I said it's going to be really tight. It's going to be close. I didn't think it would come down to this, though. Two seconds to go. Here's the field goal attempt. 40. There's a the snap ball down. The kick is up from 40 yards. And the kick is good. Pirates win. You can do it this with purple. Wow. That is unbelievable. That's a win. Long overdue. Huge kick by Ben Hartman. Now all the misses are forgotten. From 40 yards out, Ben Hartman kicks the field goal for the win. Pirates win. Panic purple over the Tar Heels tonight in Greenville. 34-31 East Carolina. Oh, my goodness, one. For all my boys at Cap Trust, I got a holy guacamole for you. How about that? <laughs> we got Marty back. An incredible finish. Marty's going to get Skip Holtz running off the field here momentarily. Marty, what's it like down there right now? Well, they've got the goalpost down to make sure that the, that the fans don't get them. But you know, one thing you can say, look at the big screen as Hartman gets a ride off the field momentarily. But you know, he missed left, he missed right, but he always had the distance. So Skip sets him straight down the middle of the field and says, just hit it. And that's what happened. The young man comes back to redeem himself after missing three field goal attempts earlier. And the Pirates win it the buzzer 34 to 31 unbelievable it really was and the goalposts did come down because they're collapsible goalposts and 
Let's go down on the field now. Marty, Scott Skip, go ahead, Marty. All right, we're going to grab Skip real quick before he goes in. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what you said to Hartman during the timeouts. Before the timeout, I told him a joke. And when they called timeout, he came back and said, well, now I got one for you. So we walked down there, and he told me a joke. And I told him, mine was a lot better than yours. Heck of a punchline, though. No, without a doubt. And as I told him, we believe in you. You know what? You missed a couple kicks. You got a chance to go out there and win this game. Just believe like it's the first kick of the night. Go be who you are. Go make this kick. And I'm excited for him because he didn't have one of his better nights. You've got a game, boy. What's this mean for this team earlier? Uh, it's a great win. It was a heck of a job. Both sides fighting. Uh, it was a heck of a football game on both sides. It was great. Thank you, All right, let's just get a couple minutes. All right, Marty. Thank you very much. Pirate players have gone over to the student side and in front of the band. And now they're coming over to the press box side of the stadium. Thank you all the fans for just great support here tonight. 43,387. And they go home happy to the Pirates winning it. And a 40-yard field goal by Ben Hartman at the buzzer. 34-31. Pirates with a win. Auburn Carolina will catch our breath. And we'll come back with our post-game show coming up right after this on the Pirate ISP Sports Network. All right, East Carolina wins at 34-31 was the final. We're doing our part for social distancing as we wrap things up. And, Coach, when you look at that game, the Pirates winning on a last-second field goal, nothing like winning a game on a last-second field goal. I mean, I've had two in my career as a college head coach. There was a walk-off field goal kind of situation like that. And those two games you never forget. You know, both were huge wins for our programs at two different schools. And certainly that game back in 2007 for the Pirates, you know, what a huge win in that rivalry with North Carolina. When you look at the game situation, have you been in one where you told a joke to a player right before a big kick or a big play or a fourth down play? Did you ever tell a player a joke to try to loosen things up? Well, I think I think we all kind of learn how to talk to the kickers. Uh, you know, that's you know, they're they're I always I always joke with Verity that he's one of the most normal kickers I've ever had. But you know, they they they, they do kind of operate in in by themselves. You know, more so than anybody else in the program. Um, so they are used to that isolation to a degree, but uh, I always try to keep it pretty lighthearted with my with my specialists in that situation. So yeah, we've done a, lot, a variety of things. I've smacked them on the side of the helmet, you know, told them a joke or or whatever, depending on that particular kid and just what he responds to. But uh, you know, I, I don't know what Coach Holt said before that kick, but obviously it was pretty good. Well, in that game, Ben Hartman had missed field goals of 30, 32, and 37 yards. He had a 39 yarder to win it. And Coach Holt told us afterwards. Skip Holt said, "I told him a joke." So I was, we all wanted to know what was the joke. The joke was it was actually a riddle. What did the why did the coach go to the bank? Do you know? I have no idea. Why did the coach go to the bank to get his quarterback? <laughs> See, <laughs> wasn't that funny then either? Uh, but it worked. I hope I could come up with a better joke than that. But obviously, it did the trick that day. I think Skip wanted to have a better joke than that too. But East Carolina wins at 34-31, one of the great games in East Carolina Pirate football history. Coach, if you had a message to the Pirate Nation right now, what would it be? You know, my, my big thing to our fans right now is just, uh, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, you know, we're in this together here in the Greenville community. We're in this together as an institution. Uh, we're in this together as a, as, a, as a program. We're in this together as Pirate Nation. So, um, you know, the big thing is focusing on each other and, and what we can do to help our fellow man. Uh, you know, doing our, our part, uh, you know, being with social responsibility with uh, distancing and trying to slow the spread of the virus but also doing our part to support each other. You know, I know here in the local area, the, the small business owners, the restaurants, everyone in the Greenville community, I think anything we can do to support them throughout the week, you know, certainly we're trying to do our part, uh, but I think we all need to. And there's so many different ways that we can, you know, come together uh, and rally together to try to defeat this thing. So uh, I know this, you know, when we're through it, uh, we're gonna come back on the other side, we're gonna come out on the other side, we're gonna be successful, and we're probably gonna be stronger than ever. Uh, I think certainly as a, as a program, that's our goal, and I think as a, as a community, that's our goal. Uh, and when we get here to August 29th, and Daddy Ficklin Stadium is packed to the gills, and we get ready to take the field against Marshall, uh, what a great setting that's going to be, because you'll really see the strength 
uh, of the Greenville area and of, and of Pirate Nation. Coach Houston, thanks so much for the visit. Best of luck as you continue on as we get set for this football season coming up. It's been a very, very weird off season for sure, but hopefully things will get back to normal as soon as possible. That's our East Carolina Classic Rewind. I'm Brian Bailey with head coach Mike Houston. Today's ECU Football Classic Rewind has been brought to you by ECU Physicians. Your wellness is our specialty. This has been a presentation of the Pirate Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.